Hello, everyone. How are you? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great pleasure to have you all here with us. Thank you so much for taking your time to join us. We hope that this will work well. <laughs> anyway, um, I would first like to give the floor to Rok to just say hi to us all. <coughs> So hi, and I'm so happy to have you all here. Um, I mean, from Ms. Vandana Shiva from India, Antoine, Antoine Kazar from Malta, Ramon from Ecuador, Quito, Quito. Andrea Udauch, the moderator with us, the editor of Sanya Publishing. With me is Tvetka, and uh, I'm Rock. And here is Nahid from Iran. Actually, she's in Montreal now, a great artist. So thank you so much for being with us, everyone. Uh, we will have um, this evening in two parts. The first part is starting launching the project Book Night Universal, which is, uh, Tvetka will tell a few words more, but we think that in time of this uh, quarantine, of this uh, coronavirus, we were forced to, went to go to ourselves and to see that actually it's, it's a great need there to connect through, through hearts, through culture. And there is 7,000 languages in the world. And most of them doesn't even have a status of minority. So we would like to invite, invite in following weeks and months many cultures, Aboriginal people from all parts of the world to, give, to empower those languages because they hold the memory of the whole humanity. And it's the greatest pleasure, uh, treasure for the future. And we want the world to become home, not just to stay home. We want Earth, planet Earth, to become home for people, animals, and plants. So this is uh, Tvetka. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, thank you, Rok. And I would also like to add something that Rok might have forgotten, is to say a very great thank you to everybody who's made this project happen. There was a lot of work put into it. But this is just the beginning. We will tell you more about all the activities that we're doing later. Now I would like to give the floor to Andrea to just read us a short letter that kind of uh, speaks about our vision and the mission and the uh, goals of this project. So Andrea, please. Hello, dear friends of books and of book night. When the night falls, the moon and stars will shine forth. A new day will emerge, but one illuminated by imagination in which distant, forgotten worlds will come to light and legends and memories will resurface, making us a part of a much bigger whole. On the wings of dreams and imagination, we can infuse life into everything around us. Today, the earth is shrouded by night which is becoming even more impenetrable. Stars and moonlight have become misted over by fog, densely woven out of heartlessness, ignorance, and mere numbers. Why? Why is, that, is it that in an era of unprecedented technological progress, in which development and well-being could effectively be everyone's, we are being put into the deadly vortex of thoughtless narcissism, away from the wonderful possibilities that life, nature, and God have given to mankind. Books reveal to us how much beauty and life there is in human beings. That there is equally monstrosity is, however, revealed to us by the constant harping of cheats telling us what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and the screams of millions of the wretched and the disfranchised on the other hand. For the diabol diabolic circle of war, violence and mindlessness to continue, the book needs to be shut, as well as the heart that opens it. For decades, UNESCO has been warning us that human nature, the core inner nature, is under threat. That daily and irretrievably cultures with their languages are being wiped out. And yet, 
the old social order continues to intentionally and insidiously steer us away from everything that give books, reading and education free reign. Book night has its calling. To bring to light our forgotten and wonderful inner being and make it shine forth. To bring back hope and trust in each other. And to remind us that we will not change the world with bombs or numbers, but by understanding who we are within ourselves and to each other in relationship to nature and animals and Mother Earth. The world is changing and waking up with a book in hand. With reading, we can light the lamp of tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andrea. This was a very nice introduction into just saying a couple of words about our Universal Book Project. Um, this Universal Book Project is was born this year, actually a couple of weeks ago, uh, within the framework of Noc Knige, the Night of the Book, a festival that the publishing Sanya has been organizing for many years. But this year, given the circumstances and everything that's going on in the world, we decided to make an extra effort to try to connect as many cultures, peoples from around the world to uh, have the opportunity to hear the voices of people that we normally never hear about or from, more to be more exact. If we think about it, like the books we read, the movies that we see, the media that we follow, mostly tell us stories from certain parts of the world, but doesn't really address many, many other parts of the world and cultures. So we, with this project, we're trying to start to change that and to build connections between all of us. And this year, as we are beginning this new project called Thoughts from All Over the World, from all corners of the world, actually, <coughs> We would like to first give the, the space, the floor to people from uh, Latin America, Africa, Middle, Middle East, and especially and maybe most importantly, indigenous people who have been, their voices have been silenced throughout hundreds of years, but we, we all know that they have a lot to say, especially about the protection of nature, the respect for Mother Earth and all of that, which is another topic that we are going to address today and in the next days. So what we're going to do within this project is that today is the grand opening. We have Vandana Shiva with us and other guests who will speak about nature. But then every day we are going to upload a video from a different author from a different country or community and they will be talking about their works their uh, relationship with literature which kind of books people read in their social environments and so on and that is the idea behind this project now i would like to uh, switch to Spanish and give a warm welcome to another guest who's with us here from Quito in Ecuador. So, hola, buenas tardes, Ramón. ¿Qué tal? Hola, buenas tardes con todos. Un abrazo inmenso, fraterno, desde la mitad del mundo. Para todos ustedes, de mi compromiso de pensar y sentir la humanidad. Un abrazo particular a Bandana, a la querida hermana, amiga, compañera, bandana, con quien hace muchos años trabajamos juntos en relación con los derechos de los campesinos, los derechos de los pueblos indígenas, al conocimiento y a las semillas. Recuerdo a bandana en Leipzig, batallando juntos desde la India y desde la cuenca amazónica para señalar que los pueblos indígenas y los campesinos son quienes poseen los mayores y los mejores conocimientos sobre la vida, no los estados, no las corporaciones, sino la cosmovisión y la sabiduría de nuestros pueblos. Hoy enfrentamos precisamente eso. Un abrazo inmenso y un saludo cordial a todas y todos ustedes. 
Uh, okay, I'll try to <laughs> summarize everything that was said. So he's sending big hugs to all, all of us here, to everybody listening, and especially a big warm hug to Dr. Vandana Shiva, because they have been working together through many years, as I understand, fighting for the rights of uh, farmers and of indigenous people in the Amazonian region. Um, he remembers that you met in Leipzig or something like that. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, he, he's very happy to join this project and to continue our work on, on these issues. So, muchas gracias, Ramón. Gracias por acompañarnos en ese proyecto. Mm, eh, estamos muy felices de ver su video pronto también, hablando sobre su escritura, la literatura en Ecuador y estas partes del mundo. De verdad, muchas gracias. <coughs> So now, without further ado, we would like to introduce our special guest uh, tonight, Dr. Vandana Shiva. I'm sure that everybody who's been working in the field of ecology and nature protection needs no introduction of her, but nevertheless, uh, Vandana Shiva is a world-renowned environmental thinker and activist. She is a leader in the International Forum on Globalization and the Slow Food Movement. She's also the director of Navdanya uh, and the Research Foundation for Science, Technology and Ecology. And most importantly, she's a tireless fighter for farmers, peasants and women's rights. She's the author and editor of many globally influential books and a lot of them deal with the issues such as seed sovereignty, food security and other topics related to ecology. We will give the floor to her to read us a couple of lines from her, uh, one of the latest books that she wrote, which is called Oneness versus 1%. One and we are very happy to also announce that we are working on a translation of that book into Slovenia now, and we hope it will be published very soon. Um, but before you start your reading, I would just like to give you a small question. Um, I read in your book that you studied physics in Canada and then that you did another doctorate with the indigenous people in India. So, and now you're dealing with all these issues that we mentioned before. I'd like to ask you how, how come that the, your life journey brought you from physics to ecology and what connections do you see between those, these two areas? Uh, we can't hear you, unfortunately. Mate. I might get off. Okay, oh, okay. No. I, I switched it off to listen to Ramon and all of you. <laughs> now you can hear me? Now? Yes, yeah. we do. Yeah, you do. Um, so I realized that the, you know, the quantum world was creating a very, very different cosmology than the mechanistic world of classical science, of, uh, of Newton, of Bacon, of Descartes. And I wanted to go deeper into it. Um, and I realized that the people who were working on the foundations of quantum theory had all been attracted to the University of Western Ontario. So anyone I wrote to for a PhD said, but I'm not in South Africa, I'm not in Israel, I'm not in England, I'm not in Australia. All of them were there. I said, what better way to do a PhD than be with the 10 people who were looking at this from different dimensions, mathematics, logics, physics. Um, even while I went, in fact, when I was leaving for, the, for Canada, I visited a favorite forest just to carry my memories in my heart. And the forest was no more. It had been chopped for an apple orchard and the streams, it, that mountain is a source of many streams, but the stream I went to swim in had very little water, just till my ankles. And that's when I felt like part of me had been chopped off. It's like my hands had gone. And I heard then about this movement of women in the mountains called Chipko, which means to hug. 
And my celebration after this lockdown will be to overcome the fear of each other that is being engineered and hug, <laughs> hug the earth, hug each other. What I learned from quantum theory is there's nothing fixed. You know, mechanistic thought says blacks are inferior, women are inferior, white men are superior, white men with money are super, super, super superior. Nature is dead. All of those assumptions are assumptions of essentializing inertness in the other and claiming the creativity of nature, of women, of peasants, as the creativity of capital, which is merely a construct. So my physics taught me quantum potential. And my life in ecology has taught me that if you take care of the soil, you will have good food. If you take care of biodiversity, rest of biodiversity will flourish. We, I save seeds, but on our farm are six times more pollinators than in the forest because the diversity of plants supports diversity of insects. The second most important thing, and in fact, that's the reading I'd like to do right away, is in nature, in ecology, and in quantum theory, everything is interconnected. Nothing is separate. On the other hand, mechanistic thought creates reductionism. It is based on separation. Immutable particles that don't relate to each other. And that also includes the atomization of the human being. And they've tried again and again, but we are ecological beings. We are social beings. And therefore we constantly create community. We constantly create culture. And I know even now the lockdown in the COVID is a desperate attempt by the 1% to atomize us, to take away our capacity to relate. So this book, Oneness Versus the 1% in English, and I'm very glad it's coming out in your country. I write, oneness is the very source of our existence, our interconnectedness with the universe, with all beings, including human beings, with our local communities. Oneness is woven through our diverse living intelligence and creativity. It represents the confluence of our rich and vibrant diversities. Biodiversity, cultural diversity, the different languages, the 7,000 languages you talked about, economic diversity. This lockdown is also an extermination of economic diversity and the attempt to create a new unified, globalized, digitally controlled world economy, political diversity. We've organized ourselves in different ways. I've just had a letter from the chiefs of Canada saying we want to connect with you because a new world has to rise. And that world is of self-organization. Political diversity comes from organizing yourself, self-organized. This is from the heart, from within. Gandhi had a beautiful word for it called Swaraj, self-organizing self-rule. And then layers and layers and layers of interconnectedness create the amazing earth democracy that I talk about. But we also have knowledge diversity. When you talked about different languages, different books, they are all communicating knowledge in different paradigms. The mechanistic paradigm is a short 200 year old paradigm. It's really a kindergarten of knowledge in human evolution. And it's been imposed from the top by about five men. Yeah, Bacon, who was also the chancellor, who was also controlled the money of England. Newton, Locke, Hobbes, they tell us what we are. They tell us how we should be organized, but we have thousands and thousands of languages and cultures. We know how to organize. We know how to live at peace with the earth. We know how to create true living democracy through self-organization. This oneness is based on the deep understanding 
that life and freedom are one. The COVID crisis is creating fear about life by one virus. We've dealt with many viruses. We ourselves are trillions of viruses in our body, 60 trillion microbes in our gut. Humans are other species. The, we are viruses and bacteria, and we don't have to declare war on them because they sustain us. They are our lives. Just like in biodiversity, insects are not our enemies to be exterminated. Insects are our friends to be protected. Is there a problem with, is it, uh, are you having a difficult time listening? No? Can you hear? No? We hear you very well and we are all listening very attentively. So <laughs> go on, go on. Okay. So this oneness is based on the deep understanding that life and freedom are one. That our freedom as humans and as members of the earth family is not separable from the freedom of the earth and all her species. Her microbes, her insects, her trees, her animals. We are animals. We you know, this mechanistic worldview has been an escape from our earthliness, our earth being. But the future will only be born when we realize we are of the earth, that biologically we are of the animal family. And I want to just read out one more little bit how we know we are staring at the face of extinction and seeding the future when possible extinction stares us in the face, seeding freedom when all freedoms of all beings are being closed for the limitless freedom of 1% to exploit the earth and life, to manipulate life and our minds. And I see what's going on now as the final attempt at colonization of our bodies and our minds as the new colonies to extract data to sell big data, uh, to manipulate our life, our minds, calls for a quantum leap in our imagination, our intelligence, our capacity, our compassion, our love, as well as the courage for creative, non-violent resistance and non-cooperation with a system that is driving us to extinction. Our only option is to heal the earth, and in so doing, healing and reclaiming our humanity, because it's through the earth we become human. There is, of course, some big men talking about only two options, extinction or escape to other planets. But there is no planet B. This is the only living planet. Life evolved here four billion years ago. We evolved here as a species of a few hundred thousand years ago. This option that we'll either go extinct on this planet or have to escape to colonize other planets. The Elon Musks are doing it. The sadly Stephen Hawking thought of it. Um, they forgot because they didn't see their being of the earth, their, their ecology, their earthiness, their love. They didn't even explore the real option we have. And the real option is to rejuvenate the earth with the deepest love and the deepest care. And that is in our hands and in our hearts and in our minds, as long as we develop another imagination. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> Thank you so much. This, this was really nice to hear. And you've given us so many cues about all the topics that we could be here discussing throughout the night and maybe for the next few days or even weeks. But I'd just like to give you one short last question. You, you talk about in your book a lot about the economic system that was set up by this 1% and how they are trying to consolidate their power, take control over more industries and all spheres of our lives. And it seems like this gl current global crisis is an opportunity for them to do it even more, to take more power into their hands and all that. But the 
the global conscience that that is not good neither for the human species nor for the planet and all other species is growing and how can we show them how can we let ourselves be heard that we we do not agree with this and what can we do so you know the book really came out of three observations in 2015 first that at the paris summit bill gates was on the stage with the heads of state zuckerberg and and I have attended UN meetings from the 80s, and the heads of state used to be heads of state. Never were billionaires standing with them and telling them what they must do, and here's a million for this, and there's here 200 million for this, and now you do this. The next year, Monsanto, a company that is my long-term friend, and uh, I think uh, we will have a, a little discussion on the whole GMO question, um, Monsanto was bought by Bayer. So I wanted to understand how this financial system works, who owned how much. And I realized that even the corporations don't own themselves anymore. They're owned by the billionaires and their asset funds. The two biggest asset funds, when I was doing the book, most of the biggest shares were in the hands of Vanguard. But now BlackRock has taken over. BlackRock and Vanguard did not exist at the time of the financial crisis of 2008. BlackRock became $7 trillion last year. But as you mentioned, during this crisis, one month, one month as bailouts are happening and monies, our tax dollars are being given, where are they landing? In the hands of the BlackRocks. BlackRock, within the COVID crisis, is controlling $23 trillion of assets. And then they are financing the burning of the Amazon because growing GMO soy in the Amazon is very profitable. And the standing Amazon doesn't bring them profits. So chop the forests. They are the ones driving every negative economy in the world today. The digitalization that has been forced on everyone when you're not allowed to go out and have to stay home, everyone's turning to Amazon to place orders. Amazon, in Mr. Jeff Bezos individually, increased his wealth by $24 billion in the middle of this COVID crisis. And from my reading, this billionaire who was the richest man who's become second big richest because of Jeff Bezos, Mr. Bill Gates, who drove the writing of this book, and I have a lot in this book about him, he's really controlling both the narrative of the COVID crisis, the lockdown recipes, and what will come out of it. He's paid $1 billion for satellites, for surveillance. He's already taken patents on ensuring that none of us will have freedom. He pushed geoengineering, manipulating the climate of the earth. He can create storms when he wants to, to destroy agriculture. He is pushing chemical farming around the world, first with AGRA, the Alliance for the Green Revolution in Africa, and now with something he launched literally in the middle of the COVID crisis, just before the peak. Ag one, there'll be only one agriculture, not the diversity of a different agriculture in the mountains and in the desert, a different agriculture in India and a different agriculture in the Andes. They want one agriculture run by one man. The figure I want to share with you is in 2010, there were 388 billionaires who controlled half the wealth of the planet. Their number came down the next year, 277 came down to 159 in 2012. In, tw in, in 2013, it was 92, 18 in 2014, 62 in 2016, eight in 2017. The following year I saw it was five. We are talking about absolutely unaccountable money. And the book has the data about how they take our tax dollars and pay no taxes. So it's wealth 
that is making everyone poorer. They have trillions and trillions and trillions. And this, the, when I talk about 1%, it's only because that's the name that was given when young people started to protest against Wall Street in the 2008 crisis. But this is a continuity of colonialism. It was one, Christopher Columbus, who got the right to go to Latin America. He came, got the right to come to India, actually, but he landed in the Americas. And all of it became part of Spanish territory. The British got jealous, created the East India Company, 300 merchant adventurers. That's all it was. They were called merchant adventurers. Went to Queen Elizabeth with the same charter as what Columbus had got and said, sign this. That's how we were colonized. They had the right to have armies. They had the right to take over trade. And I recognize what's happening today because of what we went through in colonization and what indigenous people have gone through in colonization. You go and grab what the indigenous people have carefully nourished for centuries. You call them barbarians and primitives and get the right with a civilizing mission to exterminate them. 90% of the indigenous people of the Americas were exterminated. You then take what belongs to them and call it your property. And then you take rents from the people from whom you stole that property. It was called Lagan in India. What's happening now with the digital economy? Well, do they create anything? Does Amazon produce one thing? No. All it did was create a platform. Bill Gates didn't create anything, but he creates a rent on every Microsoft transaction. And then even his Philanthropy, I have called it philanthrocapitalism, is he very carefully invests his philanthropy where he can make future money. It's health, it's agriculture, it's geoengineering, it's basically new colonies being carved out. And this has to be looked at as the new colonization. How do we deal with it? Like we became free. India became free of the British by taking back control. Gandhi started to spin cloth because all clothing had gone to England. We've got to reclaim our ability to make things. We have to create local economies. We've forgotten how to make things. We've become consumers. We have to become makers again. That is our creativity. And the final issue is whether it was South Africa or it was the salt where the British made salt their monopoly. And Indians making salt were treated as thieves. And Gandhi walked to the beach and said, nature gives it free. We need it for our survival. We will continue to make salt. We will not obey your laws. When I started to fight patenting of seed, I took inspiration from this and said, nature gives seeds to us. Our ancestors have evolved this rich heritage. We owe it to nature, our fellow farmers and future generations to exchange these gifts freely. Any law, any technology that comes in the way, we will not cooperate. Gandhi had a very powerful word for it. Satya Gre. Satya means truth. Agre means force. At the end of it, within us, we have a conscience. Within us, we have truth. Within us, we have love. That power to know what is unjust, what is untrue, what is taking away our freedom, and to say no. Our consent cannot be forced. Our consent comes from within us. And the withdrawal of our consent to things that brutalize the earth, brutalize humanity, destroy cultures, and push us to extinction, it is our duty to not cooperate, to say no. Thank you so very much for your words. It was a pleasure listening to you and hopefully many people around the world were able to hear your voice on this, your thoughts on this, not because it is your voice, but because your voice is the voice of millions of people around the world who themselves don't have their own voice in this, in this world. My love world. to everyone. My love to you. Everyone.
<laughs> I will wait to hear the GMO issue. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you also from me, dear Vandana. Yeah, I'm so happy that you are here with us. And I see, you know, I studied philosophy and my professor who I has great respect for him learned me one thing, you know, Rock. Uh, this civilization, our Western philosophy, uh, uh, civilization went mad. It's a kind of schizo uh, schizophrenic. And uh, it will go through the way of psychosis to come. The, the only way there is, and it was shown by, you know, Buddha and by Confucius. And he was a, a very strict, very rational because the philosophers and scientists from England you mentioned, you know, like Hume, David Hume and Locke and all those, they actually, they're absolutely irrational. Uh, but this is another thing. So I think uh, that's why uh, the Western, uh, the Indian philosophy is urgent in a way, the very deep one, very then. And one of the lessons of it is that the weakest, the weakest is in a way the strongest. So Absolutely. The smallest is the most powerful yeah. and the weakest is the strongest. And we are here now tonight, the weakest, and we don't think we are weak, but yeah. it doesn't matter if they ignore us. <laughs> so yeah. I think, uh, dear Vandana, if you stay with us, yes. I will ask now Andrea to introduce uh, our next guest, who is uh, a poet, Antoine. Antoine, hello. I'm, I'm really touched. I, oh, hello. I was really touched by your words, Vandana. Thank you so much. Um, and Antoine, um, Antoine, who is with us here tonight, uh, is a Maltese poet. Uh, we've met just last year um, at our beautiful poetry festival, uh, which is called Sanye in Medana. Antoine, um, how have you been since then? Um, now you're under a lockdown also. We had a beautiful time there in the midst of wonderful oh, nature. How is it all going? Wonderful memories of the of the Birda Hills and all of your company. Uh, well, to answer your question uh, briefly, I mean, yeah, I'm in lockdown. Uh, in I'm stuck in Luxembourg where I work as a translator. Um, my partner is in London and it's too dangerous to drive there. And my family is in Malta. And because there are vulnerable people in the family, I don't know how long, I don't know how long I have to wait before I can see my aunt. And uh, um, we are, in a way, we are all exiles now, aren't we? From our yeah. normal lives and from our families, loved ones in different countries. Um, one, a, a quick question. Did I understand correctly? Uh, Zvetka, have you translated Vananda's book? I'm currently working on it. I'm about halfway through, so it's supposed to get out soon, we hope. But we've had a lot of work with this festival too, so it's a little bit delayed, but we're working on it and we're very happy to do so. Great. As a translator myself, it, it's, it's wonderful to hear the translator ask questions to the author. Um, <laughs> and Vananda, thank you for for your for your thoughts. I I very probably was introduced to your work through New Internationalist magazine many years ago. Um, yeah, and thank you, Rock and Andrea and friends for for this bringing us together for this celebration of let's say slow food, slow poetry, and strong connections. Um, so I have a poem, I wrote it in Maltese about 10 years ago, but I will read it in English, self-translated. It's called Seeds, and um, it, I don't need to give it any context. So. And I won't mention a certain multinational company because I don't believe in product placement, but you will know who I'm talking about. We've already heard about them. And as Vananda said, corporations no longer own themselves, right? So, seeds. I have a plan for the plants of the planet. All plants, from A to Z. Four species are enough. The alphabet is too long. In a test tube, see me dive straight to the heart of the cell, 
see me slide down the ribbon of the spinning spiral stairs. With a platinum syringe, I inject a hormone. I straighten a chromosome. I add a brand new genome. Then I rush back up like lightning to admire the masterpiece, a suicidal color changing seed. Before the seed is sown, I must first slay the fields. Here with charcoal weeds. Here with the ink of double dealing lawyers. Here with the agent orange of my saliva. In the Americas, Africa, India, wherever there is open space, I'll sell the seeds in scores with their purpose made herbicide until the face of the earth blossoms with deserts of green. It's not a question of luck. With fertilizer, the harvest is certain, overflowing, rich, with nine month contracts and the sole condition that whoever keeps seeds for the following season, I will take to court. If the groundwater becomes polluted, I'll buy it, filter it and resell it. If the children grow warts, I'll give them a toy to take it out on. If the garden of a farmer fertilizes with patented pollen, I'll snatch away with an edict all of his lands. Thus, every acre of the land I will tread without lifting my shoes. Under the lens of the microscope, I'll build an entire empire, a cornucopia of copies, the realm of mouths, stomachs, bowels. In my hands, the palate of the world, gold in the soya, silver in the rice. Tomorrow, I'll submit a patent on the dew. Such is my patron saint, and such is the multinational taste of my name on everyone's plate. Oh, thank you so much, Andres. Thank you so much. Could you send me this sure. poem? Because I'd like to send it to all the seed keepers of the world. <laughs> sure, I will send it to you in, in multi sound English, okay? Yeah, because uh, Rock and all have my email. Okay. And they can send, yeah, they can send you the email. And let's keep in touch. And let us, small as we are, be the new force. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much from us both. <laughs> and activism. Thank you, Vananda. Thank you. Thank you. Antoine, I also wanted to say that Antoine is an author of is the author of, of this passport, which is a very special passport. Um, that we, we we like made a performance uh, last year at our festival dreams, um, and so it is a passport which gives you a permission to travel anywhere in the universe. Uh, you have it also, so uh, you know we need that desperately because the new identities that are linked to uh, uh, to the digital control, you you cannot travel without the identity that they are going to grant to you to control you. So, and all of the borders will have that. So we'll have to have a movement for the passport of true earth citizenship and true love for each other. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you, dear Vandana. No, Vandana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It was nice to have you with us and we hope to cooperate more in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, bye-bye. See you at the press conference. Yeah. Now we're going to our next guest. Uh, she'll be introduced by Rok, so I give the floor to him. So uh, I'm very happy uh, that here is with us also a great artist from one of the most ancient cultures from of the world. And this is Iranian uh, culture. What Iran is is actually a great mystery even to me because it's, it holds a lot of nations within, I think. But uh, Iran and... Uh, she, um, so with us is Nahid Kazemi. Nahid Kazemi, you can see her here. And she, she's, um, she's a great painter. I met her through Facebook many years ago and then we started, we do some books together. And I think... I have a great respect for 
Persia and Iran, but still, I don't think I know it. I don't know. I don't think I really understand it. Uh, for example, we try to translate Hafez poetry to Slovenian, and it's impossible. I think Andrei Tarkovsky once said that poetry is untranslatable, and this is, I think, especially valid for this incredible poet, Hafiz, from 1,000 or 800 years ago, I don't know exactly, from Shiraz, and also Nahit is coming from Shiraz. This is a city, a 1,000 city of poet, of poetry and beauty. And uh, we asked Ahit to 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 read a poem of Hafiz in in Farsi original language, and then to try to translate it maybe to English. But before that, uh, Nahit, please tell how are you? What are you doing? Hello, Rock, and thank you for inviting me. It's a great pleasure to see all of you here. And it was very touching to to hear Vandana, uh, Vandana's talking and uh, Vandana's work. And then thank you, Antoine. Uh, for, um, it was very uh, wonderful to me. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Rock, for introducing me. Um, and uh, also Hafez is from seven years ago, 700 years ago, a poet, an Iranian poet, prominent Iranian poet from Shiraz, my hometown. And uh, uh, today I brought you a, a poem from Hafez because uh, it's actually a part of uh, our next project, Bistanye that uh, actually the project that I am proud of. And uh, I uh, chose a poem um, about uh, a poem that uh, Hoffman is talking about hope. And maybe because uh, all we need nowadays is just hope, a ray of hope. And uh, all, ne all we need is um, someone make us hopeful. So, uh, as uh, Hafez uh, do it for me always, uh, he is a poet, uh, a poet that makes me hopeful always. I chose a poet for you, uh, a poem for you, and I can read it in Farsi and then in English if you agree. Yes, that would be really nice. Okay. Yusuf Gom Gashte Bazayat Bekan on Gammahot. گلوی احزان شود روزی گلستان غم مخور ای دل غم دیده حالت به شود دل بد مکن این سر شوریده باز آید به سامان غم مخور گر بهار عمر باشد باز در تخت چمن چسب گل در سر کشی ای مرغ خوشخان غم مخور دور گردون گرد و روزی بر مراد ما نگشت دائما یکسان نباشد حال دوران غم مخور آن مش و نومی چون واقف نی از سر غیب باشدن در پرده بازی های پنهان غم مخور. And now the English version. <laughs> Lost Joseph will return to Canaan land again. Don't despair. His grave in father's house will fill with flowers again. Don't despair. Oh, sorrow stricken heart. Your fortunes will revive. Order will come to your distracted mind again. Don't despair. And if the heaven turn against us for two days, they turn and will not stay forever in one place. Don't despair. Sweet singing bear, survive until the spring, and then you read on grass again, deep in the flowers, deep in the flowers shade. Don't despair. Don't give up hope. You have no knowledge of fate's lore. Behind the veil, who knows what hidden terms is still wait. Don't despair. And the translation was from Dick Davis. And from um, Dick Davis in actually has done one of the best translation of Hoffa's poem, poet poems. That's it. Nahi, thank you very much. 
the book you mentioned that is uh, in Croatian is called I think Ashk. We agree it's called Ashk, and Ashk means something very special. What does mean Ashk? Ashk actually is love. Yes. Love, yeah. But it's difficult to translate it because it means many other things, not just love in English. Yes, it's difficult to translation because uh, because of the culture. And I think love or ash is uh, as maybe has uh, different meanings from different uh, for different cultures. And what hope is uh, uh, what uh, when hope is talk about uh, ash or love, we Iranian. Mm, understand it understand it differently and it's very different for them um, translate or translate it that's why i always said that uh, half is translation when we read half is translation is not as deep as when we read it in farsi in other languages we can't feel that deepness uh, but uh, I I found uh, this translation of Dick Davies very closer than others to this poem. Poet and this poem. Uh, Nahita, my last question: What is the reason? I mean, we heard a lot about that Iranian people, even the, uh, uneducated people, can. Uh, uh, knows half his poetry by mouth. Is that true? And how is that possible? Yeah, Hafez is a poet. Uh, is a poet that um, everybody, um, including uh, intellectual people, people in the street, every and uh, different class of people uh, like Hafez, read Hafez. And uh, most of people, actually, I can say, uh, the majority of Iranian people have one Hafez in their home. And uh, someone like me have a Hafez in my pillow. OK, what? <laughs> great. <laughs> why is that? Why is that, Nahid? Why, why? How is that possible? Why is he so precious for people? Maybe because. Uh, Hafez uh, is a poet. Is a uh, poet that opens another universe to the people, you know. And uh, but uh, he's talking through the language of uh, uh, people in the street, the language of nature, the language of uh, mm, the very simple language, you know. When you read Hafez, it's something uh, you feel it mm, very simple, but very deep. So deep, deepness and so that's it. Yeah. Thank you, Nahid. So now we have to move on because now we expect. I to say that uh, I'm not in the stage that uh, talk about Hafez. A lot of um, researchers. Uh, I'm just an other illustrator, and uh, I I'm just a Hafez reader and a, uh, actually a fan of Hafez. Who, oh no! Uh, but uh, I can't uh, um, I can't talk about Hafez. I'm not in this stage. I am just telling my own interpretation and my my own thoughts and thoughts about Hafez, but. Um, there are a lot of books and research about Hafez. So Andrea is showing a cover you have done for Orhan Pamuk's book that we have produced. It's called The Red Hair Woman. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so and this is uh, Three Daughters of Eve. So, you know, Nahid, it's not, uh, I think you are very competent. I have read a lot of books uh, also by academics about Hafiz, but the way you present it, it's uh, precious. It's a very simple one, but you are an artist with uh, incredible sensi sensitivity, which is in all your paintings. So you are, 
you are absolutely competent for me, more than maybe even I will not name anyone. Okay. Thank you so much. That's very so good. So thank you. Thank you all for being our guest. Now we'll, I will finish really internationally. So in Spanish, I will give now mic to Andrea and Svetka because here is with us uh, an artist from Venezuela, another country which is on a list of forbidden uh, countries and forbidden. So. <laughs> Uh, Ecuador, 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 which was revolution. Oh, I am totally, but so sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, th that was uh, really lapsus. Um, I think so. I will, I will leave it now to Cvetka, mm -hmm. and then uh, we'll continue the program with Matias Sulce is waiting there with his team, and we are all invited to follow us on uh, on a live stream on Facebook, Sanje, or Universal, Universal Book Night or for Slovenians, Noč Knige. So, Cvetka. So, I'm very happy to be hearing all these languages here today. This is also part of the spirit, the idea of this project, to empower all the languages in the world. I wish we could say hi or just say something in all the 7,500 languages, but we can't. Now we're just going to say... Uh, goodbye to, to this international part and, and move on to the Slovenian part of the presentation of our project and we'd like to do it in Spanish so uh, Ramon, si usted quería decir una, un par de palabras en español para saludar a toda la gente que quizás está escuchándole desde Latinoamérica o España o cualquier otra pa otro parte del mundo donde se habla español nos puede contar algo Cualquier cosa que quiere decir en español en este momento. Gracias, un, un saludo a todos y a todas. En mi caso, tengo mucho interés de ser parte de esta iniciativa para compartir con ustedes una poética que tiene que ver con el conocimiento, una poética basada en la cosmovisión, una poesía basada en la forma de relación y de coexistencia pacífica con todas las formas de vida. Una poesía sustentada en el conocimiento, en la relación con el otro, en la relación con el distinto, en la relación con lo ajeno. Creo que la humanidad vive un momento de una crisis terminal, de una racionalidad económica, científica, cultural, política y tecnológica y que debemos buscar una nueva racionalidad ambiental, social, cultural, estética y ética. Un saludo y una felicitación a la editorial por esta iniciativa en el Día Internacional del Libro, donde debemos aprender que necesitamos leer más y mejores libros y leer más y mejor a la vida. Eso está muy bien dicho, exactamente lo que creemos nosotros también. He said that we should unite all of us from all corners of the world. We should unite through culture and books, and this is what we're trying to do. So just once again, we'd like to invite everybody to participate in this project, to follow the thoughts and ideas of creators from all over the world and to join us in trying to build Not connections. Just yes, I, I invited them to participate but also to hear other people talk about their art. So yeah, join us and we'll start building new connections. Now we would like to give the floor to Matthias Soutse if they are ready. Matthias, are you there? Let me let make a sh brief introduction or oh, Andrea would you like to say something so Matthias Sulza is one of the uh, most acclaimed theater uh, directors and uh, a master of puppetry and uh, a kind of Slovenian ah, genius okay then Aha, so here so uh, we play the the, the take 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 song yeah yeah yeah, yeah. What, what are you doing I mean Matthias are you here <laughs> so he, he's really the troublemaker put my video on we can't see you yet. Uh, please put your camera on. Are you uh, ready? You have, to, you, you have to. You disabled me. Uh, so, uh, oh, really? Yes. So, I will just I'm now disabled. Give me. Give Completely me. disabled. 
I think it's the part of a person. When it finishes, we go, you start. So, no? But Tia is also a great comedian. I, I think he's joking, but I'll check now. I'm not joking. Oh. Aha, so you are live. So oh. let me tell. Matija is in beautiful part of Slovenia, countryside. There are with about, I don't know, six artists from various countries, and they will perf do something for Universal Book Night event, or Matija? Yes, yes, I'm here, sorry, yes. So, see, the floor is yours. Excuse me? The floor, ah, is, the floor is ours, floor is okay. Yours, yes. So, hello, everyone. We are <coughs> coronavirus, no, corona, we are... Uh, we are collective uh, K52 because we live here for one month now and we prepare this in just like two moments before you uh, we will start this now and this is right now that's why so it's going to be like 20 minute performance and don't go away because there will be some big mistakes and some big gaps but suddenly it will become very very interesting so the sun is just rising behind the mountain and we are just waiting for the sun to not rise to down yeah we are just waiting to down, and now we will start. Uh, Yera will be the cameraman. This is the last time you see her, mm -hmm. and she will turn around, and we will start. Are you Are you ready? Okay, we don't hear you. That's That's good. You are ready. Okay. Uh, turn around to kill it. Yeah. Can we laugh? <laughs> 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 Znadlejško pula sem šel, en traktor je šel grabet, pa en mulc je za njim z mopedam teral. Jaz sem pa razmišljal, buh več je zemla, res okrogla. Če bo še dolgo vsehu, bo za en dreko tave. Ne je važno, kam greš, važno je, kam prideš. Ne je važno, kaj misliš, važno je, kaj rečeš. Najvažno, kaj znaš, važno je, koga poznaš. Da se srečem.
Kakšno kurčevo masko, sej naj pust, sem kričal po trgovini. Je djala, poni, povdna je ura, in je bi smo pa tle, sta upokojenec, ste rizičen. Ti boš mi eno smrkla rizičen, sem jo prijel za kravatec, te bom direktu ksiht kihnil, imam taljansko protezo. No, pol me je pa civilna zaščita odpelala v samoizolacijo. Kiham v rokav, umivam se rokje, držim distanco in balinam sam samo. Vsem, ko me poznajo, sporočam, v dobro se držim. Hvala za podporo. Porto, la korona, moja bolje, libeta. La corona, ni ne stone, ni papa, ni o morto, la corona, ni ne ne, la ni peta, me no mora to smagala, me no mora to smagala, me no mora to smagala. Ja ne zvalina. Panda mia. Panda mia. To ni panda mia, to je panda mia. Wait a moment. Panda mia doesn't mean that it's my panda. Panda means that you are pandas. You know why? Because sleeping, sleeping, sleeping and not doing anything makes you feel pandemic. That's why you should like it. You should love it. You should have it like a little precious. Do you want to see something? Rock, do you want to see something? I don't hear you. Do you want to see something? No. 
Okay, come with me. Come with me. I will show you why you have to drink a lot of good, good tea every day. Every time. Every moment of your life. Enjoying, enjoying, and enjoying. Come, come, come to see. This is how we are. This is who we are. This is how we live. And this is why we are not black and not white. We are black and white. It doesn't matter who you are, how you are. It doesn't matter matter how you look like. And now come with, me. come with me to see this beautiful house of retreat in which I always take my little break. Is there any tea? Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, I wasn't expecting you guys to see this is Hannah James, famous oh. Hannah James. You will recognize her by yes. her special. Shall I, uh, shall I make some tea? Yes. yes. Uh, you want some tea? Yeah. Rock, do you have any, any question? Anybody has any question? It's time for tea. Do you have it? Slight gas issue. Slight so gas issue. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe we play. Maybe we play. Um, it looks like uh, we didn't prepare the tea, but uh, we prepared something else. Do you want to hear something very sad? Good. We don't hear you, but we accept you as you are. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, jealousy, what have you done? What a twisted depiction of worlds you have spun. Where life is not measured by moments of pleasure, but by all the races others have won. Oh, jealousy, what have you done? Oh, jealousy, what will you do? Now you're tangled and torn by the thorns that you grew. Will you stay in the brambles, restricted and strangled? By all the injustices hindering you. Oh, jealousy, what will you do? Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, I'm Hannah James, and uh, I'm I'm from England. Um, I'm a musician, and uh, for this uh, strange of 
strangest of strange times, I found myself uh, quarantined uh, in Slovenia. I was here visiting and uh, then I was supposed to go straight to Canada, but um, that is no longer happening. So here I am in this amazing place full of musicians. Come and see, come and see. This is uh, our little caravan where we can sleep and make tea and do everything. And uh, this is our the beginnings of a permaculture garden here that we're starting. Uh, the most important part of which is our new chickens. Come and see the chickens. There's one called Babs. There's one called Gloria. Um, don't worry about him, just uh, the, the chickens are much more interesting. So we'll uh, just go and see them. So, uh, you want to see something else? Come here, come here. Come, come, come. This is my little workshop. This is Natasha. <laughs> she dropped, just dropped in by mistake, but everything is under control because we have running water, which represents the life. And we have the photos, which represent the death. To die, to lay this body down, and must my trembling spirit fly into a world unknown. Unend or deepest shame. Armed is my human fault, the dreary road and the dead, where all things are forgotten. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Masse Mulz, was der Firmitz macht. Folkturisch, wir fallen ein bisschen Thomas das Bett. Folkturisch, wir fallen ein bisschen Thomas das Bett. Das ist Baba Lajes Leitsch. Folkturisch, das ist auch trotzdem Meitl. Folkturisch, das ist auch Pastares Karik. Voll. Nein, das brauche ich. Das brauche ich. Folkturisch, das ist auch trotzdem Spurio. Der war Julei Nasmo. Hey, du warst das hier, Sigurd. Hey, hey, komm hier, komm hier. Komm hier. Du siehst. Stopp. Do you want to know the secret? Do you want to know a secret? Anybody has a lighter? Just a lighter. Just a lighter. Yeah. <laughs> lighty, lighty. Do you know how the falling stars are made? Like this. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> they don't even get alive. They are just strictly dead. I oh, know. Oh, we have another lighter. No. You know how the falling stars are made? Like this. Burn. Come on, come on. <laughs> Yeah, like this. Every time a falling star falls, somebody dies. Once, once it was you, once you were many, once. It was two of you, but now you are alone. Važne sam tri stvari. Poezija pa šnot. So, that was it. We wish you all the best from Kozarišče K52. The uh, colony, colony K52 is sending regards to you from all in all shapes, in all colors, and on one spot. Thank you for uh, hosting us. And uh, if you have any question, we can be quite responsive. Ciao. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Also das ist Lischima. Ja, mir ist es Lischima. Hey, mir tut. Ja, ne, wem mir tut ja. Hey, mit dir auf voll Qualer war. Mir ist, mir sind mal auf Wimmer. Lass mich verlesen, du Silam wo Sadio, du ja paar Matei in. Nicht mehr. Kako? Nicht mehr. Nicht mehr. Ja, weil, dass da wo Sadio ihnen pomaga, da kr, ja tolle kr. Mir sind sehr gut. Televizije ne delajo, več tist, kar bi mogli delati, in se ne kvarja, spomembni in strmin, se moramo pač mi. In v prihodnih mesecih, tednih želimo prirediti več live streamov. Mislim, da ima Cvetka potrditve, Cvetka povej morda, kaj več. 
Ja, jaz sem v zadnjih dveh, treh tednih govorila z ljudmi, s, ja, ko sem že prej omedla, <laughs> iz Latinske Amerike, iz Afrike, iz Zahodne Sahare, Ugande, Etiopije, Palestine, iz Havajo, Guama, Nove Zelandije, pa še kaj bi se našlo in vsi ti ljudje, pač tisti, ki se bojo odločili, da se pridružijo, bojo posneli svoje videe in nam bi jih bojo poslali, pa bomo mi to objavili na naši strani, tako da bomo imeli odlično priložnost, da slišimo misli iz vseh kotov sveta in vaš vložek je bil tudi del tega. Hvala vam res. Tukaj kažemo, da se umetnost, ples, glasba in knjiga in vse to povezuje, kar je tudi naš namen, da se vsi povežemo. Tak da. Thank you, hvala. Matija, vidimo Janik Eichenblau, pa ne vemo, kdo je to. A, ti, a je to tvoje maso, se ga ti povabil? <laughs> ne vidiš? Janik Eichenlaub, a je to kakšen vaš? A kdo poznate? Ne. Ja sem odjetno čisti neizobražen, ampak nič medini. Mogoče je pseudonim. Mogoče je pseudonim. Andreja, kdaj si ti, ko... Kdaj ti malo povej, še ti ima ti... Kdaj povej, kdo je to Jan Eichenlaub? Nima, ne spomno. Jaz samo Pando poznam. A, tako. Kdaj to je za dost? Ja, Aha, a kako se ga pa spusti, Mateja, a, lahko, a, mislim, ker je mjutjan in kamero ima mjutjano in to. Kaj pa če kakšen agent? <laughs> a smo to kdo gleda zdaj, ne? <laughs> a torej, ne, med tem a, povem, čakamo še dobri lozvonarek, ampak je še par minut, ker ima en drug stream. Ona pa dela noč knjige na Hrvaškem, že deveto leto in nas zanima ni, njihova izkušnja. In pa čakamo Ljaža Koprivnika, Rja Pesnika, in, a, ki pa je tudi na, nekem, na neki drugi televiziji ta trenutek. Skratka, upam, da se nam pridružijo na love streamu. Andrej, jaz sem pripišen, da imaš ti na zalogi še kaj materijala. A, a je pa res, Matija? Matija, imate vi še kakšno točko? Mamo. Yeah. Do you have accordion? Yeah. And uh, Miha has some poetry. He can say it in English, if there's some in English. Ne, to je kako slovensko se je zdaj učitno. Ja, yeah, to drugi del je bolj slovenski, ampak je še vedno internacionalen. Spa bomo imeli zdaj hrvaško, upam. Let's play to like a song. Yeah. Yeah. In the van? A bomo mi za en, en še komad zaigrali, če hočete. Ja. Zdaj, da je super. A, en, ka se mu reče tuliki, zaradi tega, ker Hana sodeluje z eno harmonikašico tuliki in je za njo naredila, naredila ta komad. Ja, drugač pa, uh, ja, mi nismo zdaj taka stalna skupina tukaj, ampak smo slučajna skupina. Tako je to, kar se zdaj slišali, je bilo po sili razmer, ne pa po sili uh, želja, ampak po drugi strani je to včasih malo zmenšano. Ja, Matija, res ful vam hvala in ne bom pozabil tvoje predstave knjigo CIT, ki je tudi nastala v vsega dveh, u, v dveh urah, ko sem mladinsko knjigo skušal prevzeti, se spomniš? Ja, se spomnim, to ni bila predstava. <laughs> pa to to ni predstava. E. Tako ki do, do, do brilja kliče. Uh, Cvetka in Andreja, prevzem. Ja. Zdaj bom mi zašpilal. No, dejte. Ej, uh, evo Jera. Evo. A. Frida! This is a Tuliki song. I explained that it's about Tuliki from uh, Estonia. And they have a great, great duo with Hana. And hopefully, once uh, we will have a really like a professional uh, coronavirus. <laughs> Here we are. K52 group.
šiestek je mogla bit ura, njih ta druga čsva malcala. Pa me je prv rejsk vprašala, Tudi, ne misliš, da sem se zmedila? On zajt sem bil raj tiho, a pa sem pa vsem rekel, no prav su, kaj naj se koli bila, čas smrti, 17, 32, vzrok korona, v službe resnice. Ej, hvala vam ful, lep pozdrav v Kozarsče. Lep pozdrav nazaj vse konci sveta. Zdaj pa bomo spet malo mednarodni, namreč med tem se nam je pa pridružila Dobrila, Dobrila Zvonarek. Dobrila je, Dobrila je predstavnica noči knjige na Hrvaškem. Noč knjige so pravzaprav začeli pred devetimi leti na Hrvaškem in ima izjemen odziv, mislim, da okrog 1500 prireditev domišljila, nima me ja, tudi na Hrvaškem, mi smo leto za njimi začeli, mislim, 2014 prvič, in danes je v noč knjige na slovenskem vključenih že 180 krajev, v sedmi državah Slovenci po svetu prirejajo noč knjige, V sto šolah, menim, da se že dogaja noč branja, seveda, kot da ni karantene, noč branja zgleda tako, da otroci prespijo v šolah in je to za mnoge pač zelo lepo nepozabno doživetje. Zdaj pa pozdravljam Dobrila, Dobrila, se slišimo? Dobro večer, dobro večer, Dobrila. Povezava Dobrila. Mute, unmute. Malo se lovimo. Aha, evo super. Dobroveče, ne čujemo te. Dobroveče. E, super. E, noč knjige, 23. april, Svetski dan knjige. Kaži, ti si sa tim projektom, sa Mišom in ekipom več devet godina, je li? Da, sledeče godine imamo obljetnico v okruglu. Ej, kaži nam, kaži nam nešto pozitivno, kako, kak, šta je noč knjige, zašto, zašto vi to radite na Hrvaškom? Pa, 
Ja mislim da je Noć knjiga u Hrvatskoj zapravo jedna velika kampanja za poticanje čitanja i kupnju knjiga. U konačnici se to svede na to. Znači, na mobilizaciju ljudi da čitaju i da na taj način rade i na svojoj dobrobiti i na dobrobiti svog društva. Jer svi znamo da ako društvo ima pojedince koji su sposobni verbalizirati svoje misli, ostvariti svoje želje, da je tada i društvo bolje. Znači, to je jedna zapravo velika kampanja za poticanje čitanja koja se u Hrvatskoj održava već 9 godina. Kako to izgleda uživo? Šta se te, kakve vrste uh, ovih eventa ima, imate? Sva, šta, šta ste smislili? <laughs> pa, uh, šta ste smislili ljudi? Postoje, znači, postoje ni stvari koje uh, mi organizatori radimo, a postoje one stvari koje rade uh, sudionici noći knjige. I, pa to su zapravo stvari koje su dosta raznolike i ovise o tome tko je, um, tko je ovaj, taj koji događanje organizira. Znači, kada to rade škole, u Hrvatskoj, onda je normalno da će one pozvati nekog pisca na druženje s djecom um, ili da će organizirati nekakve kvizove, um, nagradne igre. Kada to rade nakladnici, onda oni imaju klasična predstavljanja, potpisivanja, javna čitanja, uh, knjižare, da kako imaju popuste, antikvarijati isto. A evo ove godine sve je online, što je onako bio veliki izazov ali mi smo uspjeli um, u jednom kratkom vremenu, koliko je zapravo bilo od nekakvih početaka ti, te socijalne izolacije u Hrvatskoj, kraj može, kad do danas um, prijavilo nam se više od 500, 500 programa različitih, što je zaista puno. A posebno puno je za nas koji smo sve te programe nekako morali koordinirati, uređivati, biti ljudima na pomoć za svako pitanje, za svaku sugestiju. Znači, prilično smo se naradili da bi to tako izgledalo. Kako to kod vas izgleda? Je li imate puno sudionika? Pa, naša uloga je um, nekako povezivati cijeli prostor, a želja je, to je jako ljudski projekt. Znači, nagovaramo sve generacije od ono najmlađih do najisključenijih. Čak kao i kod vas, ja mislim da zatvorenici imaju pravo na noć knjige da čitaju u kasno noć. A na drugoj strani sad uh, uh, uključ, pokušamo uključiti ove penzionjere i ono najstarije uh, prebivalstvo. Uh-huh. Jer ovdje postoji, mi smo kao što je Vandana Šiva malo prepričala, totalno atomizirano društvo. Čak i mi, ako sad ovako zavamo, mi sad radimo to sedam godina, uh-huh. uz paralelno u Hrvatskoj. Nismo nikad, osim jednom, jednom jedinom da smo se sreli ovim, ove godine, Nemo vreme čak, a sad nas ova situacija karantena nekako prinudila da se barem preko live streama i tako, barem malo počnem povezivati. A zanimljivo je da danas, što smo već istaknuli u prvom delu, jel, je na neki način ljudi su otvoreni svugde na svetu za ovo povezivanje. Je dug će, je svet koji, koji je bio juče, menja se i svi znamo da se može promeniti, a može samo da ova, recimo, noćna mora po, postaje još gora nego što je, ili da ipak ljudi nekako udružimo snage i ovu, ovu zemlju uradimo za zajednički neki dom, kako se to kaže na hrvatskom, uh-huh. da negde gde niko ne treba da se boji, da živi, zna da je varan, pa onda će i njegov lični dom biti puno, puno varni i puno lepši, uh-huh. ako će... To, to je nekako naša, naša vizija. Cvetka želi nešto da kaže. Ako smo već na to, mogu da preberem, kako se kaže na hrvatskom, da pročitam jednu pjesmu od Srečka Kosovela. Ne znam da li znate kdo je Srečko Kosovel na hrvatskom. Po imenu. Po imenu. Da, da, on je jedan izmed najboljih pesnika u Sloveniji. Živio je samo 23 godina, ali napisao je 22 godina, ali napisao je puno, puno pesma koja su so danas 
još danas ih otkrivamo kao aktualne, kao za ove razmere danas. I onda ovdje, ja sam samo otvorila tole knjigo, zove se Pravica i ta prva pesma zdi se mi da je baš prikladna za ovaj čas. Zove se Ta strašni čas. Ta strašni čas. Neurejen čas. Poplavlja z nemirom iskanje vse naše, vse naše smeri. Lomi in ubija nam sanje. Zločin, zakrament, zakrament je zločin. Bolest je z ljubezni ospeta. Oropa na tiha svetišča so src, ko da so zakleta, prekleta. Iz mrtvih in zapoščenih se lišč plovejo sive obupne molitve. Pol mrtvi evropski človek od tam si kliče rešitve, rešitve. Ja sem zapital Dobrilo, da je ona, ako možda ima neko pjesmu, Dobrilo, da je nam je na Hrvatskom. Imat ću, imat ću, imat ću. E, dajte mi išći. Dajte mi koju minutu. E, super, možemo. A ja ću... Može Andreja nešto da kaže o... Andreja, samo nešto. Andreja je baš sad prevela, mislim, neku predivnu knjigu, a to su... To je mlada poezija Silvije Plet, ljubezinska pesem Norega Dekleta. Nastala prej lepa knjiga, ki je nažalost išla ravno v času, ko ne smemo več v knjigarne in upamo, da bo čim prej res med bralci. Ker pa ima, da Andreja, jaz predlagam, če imaš knjigo pri sebi, da nam prebereš eno pesem, da nam recitiraš eno pesem. Razen, če znaš na pamet, med tem, ko Dobrila poišče še v hrvaščini svojo. Andreja. Silvina poezija je res krasna, to so te rasne vrtnice poezije, mlade Silveja Plet, ampak bom mogoče malo kasnej, ampak sem pa v bistvu hotela kot odgovor na cvetkino, sem pa takoj našla tudi jaz sreč, kako so vela človek, dve knjigi, ki se povezujeta in ima eno krasno pesem, ki smo jo kar nekako proglasili za eno od pesmi noči knjige, kot nekakšna himna, ker je res, kot bi bila napisana pač direktno za to. Na ponoči izveš, koliko zvest je vrh ljuba, koliko bratov čutiš sredi srca, Koliko bratov sveta, koliko bratov sveta. Če na sredi noči izveš, koliko oči se zapira v scen, da nisi sam zapuščen. Če na polnoči, ko je zore zlata zvezda vleščijo na nas. Vsaka ima miren, zeleno srbrn obraz. Hvala srečko Kosovel, tam nekaj iz on stranstva vse. Ta pesem je, kot bi bila napisana za noč knjige. In tu stranstva. Zdaj pa mislim, da je Dobrila našla pesem. Dobrila, da li imaš reč? Ali dajte mi samo sekundu, da nađem tekst. Jer mislim, da je neču dobro. Neču je dobro, ako ću krenuti na pamet, ipak je malo dolja. A se nami je, i vidim, je Antoine Kazar, pesnik. Promatra, iako ne znam koliko razumije, on zna puno jezika, ima teški španjolski, engleski, ali sumnjam da zna hrvatski. Evo našla sam je. On razume nas duhom. Energiju. Ne znam da je znači za mi, ok? Sam samo slišan. Enjoj. Kip gori na slovenijan. In Croatian, now we are in Croatian. Dobrila is from Zagreb, doing a, you know, their book night in Croatia. Great. Hvala. So, still here is me. Ok, evo, ako može, ja ću rado prečitati. Slobodno? Slobodno. Znači, pjesma je od Enesa Kiševića. To je jedan živući pjesnik. Inače je dosta čest gost u nacionalnoj knjižnici gdje ja radim. I pjesma se zove Nema ljudi. Ne možeš reći nema ljudi. To je kao da veliš nema nade. I među mrtvima ima ljudi. Ima ljudi jačih i od riječi, jačih od vlata, jačih od mržnje. Jačih od svojega srca. 
samo se ti ljudi ne vide. Nemoj govoriti nema ljudi. I među mrtvima ima ljudi. Još uvijek ima ljudi slabih na dobrotu, gorkih na nepravdu. Ljudi jačih od svojega imena, jačih od svoje vjere. Kako možeš reći nema ljudi? Ima ljudi. Još uvijek na svijetu ima ljudi. Ljudi punih stida, samo ti se ljudi ne čuje u našem glasu. Ni svjetlo se ne čuje, a svjetli. Puno hvala. Ništa. Hvala vama. Dobri da, mi smo rekli da danas napravimo izimu i da tek počinjemo noć knjige koja neće trajati samo ovu noć, nego će trajati najmanje do kraja maja. A ako potraje, kako je Andreja pjesnička zapisala noć na zemlji još duže, onda će trajati dugo, dugo. Pa nadam da će biti prilike da se još ovako sretnemo skroz literaturu i poeziju. Tako da puno hvala što si bila s nama. Imaš možda nešto da bi još nešto kazala slovenskim čitaocima i stvaraocima? Pa vi ste nama nekako uvijek kada su u pitanju posebno nakladništvo ili situacija koja je u vašim knjižnicama, vi ste nama tu nekako uzor. Pa ja vjerujem da iz vaše perspektive vi vidite prvenstveno koje vi probleme imate, a koje trebate rješavati, ali vi ste nama super. Ja jedino mogu nama poželjeti da u nekim stvarima vas dostignemo. A inače, evo, pa želim da više surađujemo. Surađivali smo nedavno s vašim kolegama iz nacionalne knjižnice, baš na jednom knjižnicarskom skupu, i ti susreti su onda i najbolja prilika i za razmjenjivanje iskustava i za planiranje nekakvih novih stvari. Pa ja se nadam da će takvih novih stvari i novih projekata zajednički biti. Pa da nas noć knjige, kao što nas je ono prije dosta godina kad smo se sreli prvi put povezala, da nas povezuje i dalje. E, puno ti hvala. A ja sam zapanut zapravo jer ovdje u Sloveniji Mislim, što se mene kao, mi smo izdavači knjiga, Sanja, ne? Meni su hrvatski kolege bili uzor, jer su brži, jači i sve, imate veće tržište, a mi smo ono, jedva da živimo kao, jedva da duha, a nažalost, na veliku nažalost, i u ovoj našoj državi, našoj, ja ne bi tako kazao, jer ponašanje je sve više protiv kulture, Nema baš podrške za knjige. Čak i one male pare koje knjiga dobiva, mislim da nije dosta više od 2 milijuna eura na godišnoj razini neposrednih subvencija za knjige. To je toliko koliko samo kamata na ovaj zunani dug naplačuje država Slovenija u par sati svakog dana. To je jedan mali dio onoga što su sad samo povećali sredstvo za naoružanje, za NATO i tako dalje. Tako da zaista se pitam gde ono živimo, mislim i tako neće biti dalje. I nažalost sad žele da se i raskinu ugovori u Sloveniji sa ovim novom vladom zbog ove situacije i čak za već postojeći ugovori za knjige. Tako da sasvim otvoreno slovenska knjiga je ugrožena. A mislim da je i na neki način i Hrvatska i da nekako, a ja verujemo u moć povezivanja među svima nama. A ja ovdje došao, imamo i mačku, a vidite ovdje, ran, evo to je. Ran, mi se neki nešto kako. A, Antoine ga zna, on je bio jednom. Tako da... Mislim da je bilo vrlo važno ono što je danas Vandana Šiva racionalizirala kad je bila naša gošća, pa ćemo to još slušati, jer u Indiji imaju ta problem jako potencijeran i zapravo ljudi se bori za život tamo. A verujemo u snagu kulture, a svaka kultura bazira na kulturi srca zapravo, ne znanja. Znanje je samo u potporu snage srca, nekako tako. A knjige su neke, kako bi rekao, kako bi se temo rekao, zavetnice ili jaka potpora svima nama da lakše idemo kroz život i postajemo jači kroz razumijevanje ljepote i svobode. 
A sad, kako dobro, ako treba da ideš dalje, evo, možemo da se pozdravimo. Da, moram izgledati emisiju otvaranja. E, čao, pozdravi sve u Zagrebu i svugde. Sretno sam da i vidimo se još. Hvala. Čao. Čao. Andreja, jaz mislim, da imaš ti nekje na jeziku? Ja, tako da smo lepo sprehodimo še po Sloveniji, najlepše hvala dobrili, da sem nam najavila še iz Hrvaške sosednje. Ja, rok, a bomo nekako poskušali pokriti, kaj se vse dogaja v Sloveniji pač te dni in kako smo si zamislili to letošno noč knjige. Mi smo se, pač letos je bilo to tako, mi smo nameravali biti pridni po regalcih in narediti vse kljukice tako, kot morajo biti, ampak vse kaže na to, da je noč knjige ima neko tako gverilsko srčno kri. Lani smo recimo takole na 1, 2, 3 organizirali sejem v parku Zvezda, ki je bil krasno obiskan. To je bilo pač tudi v sklopu oziroma za noč knjige, za dva dni smo ga predstavili izred slabega vremena, ampak krasno doživetje. No, letos pa se je pa presenetla ta karantena, izolacija, v kateri je vandana šiva predko krasno kritično spregovorila, kako je to v bistvu tudi neka igra in igra, ja, pač vsi, ki se imajo za svetovne, ampak v resnici, v resnici niso tiste prave človečanske. No, in potem smo se v bistvu reorganizirali in smo vseeno, čeprav je najprej kazalo, da bo v noči knjiga letos morda celo ne bo, smo se potem reorganizirali in smo jo predstavili tako le na domove, v naravo, pa seveda potem v virtualne svetove. V bistvu, vaš odziv, potem skozi smo mi razposlali skozi svoje novičnike, skozi družabno mreže na razno, razne načine, je bil odziv ljudi že zelo lep, ampak tudi v bistvu se pošela začenja, zaradi tega, ker letos ponovadi je bilo tako, da so se spremljevalne prireditve zvrstile skozi vs. april in je bil ta 23. april, svetovni dan knjige, nekakšen višak. Letos smo pa rekli, ker smo robili nekaj več časa pod za reorganizacijo, da je danes utvoritev. In tale naš love stream, kot smo ga poimenovali iz Kausa v kozmos, je v bistvu začetek in štartamo torej s tem dnevom in skozi vs. maj, skozi še vs. maj pričakujemo vaše pesmi, vaše misli, vaše zgodbe v okviru noči pisanja, ki je ena literarna taka pobuda. Potem pričakujemo, da se bodo šole vključili, da bodo vrci se vključili, pač na kakšne take načine, ki se pač v danih razmerah kakor se v danih razmerah da. Mi smo pripravili en vodnik po noči knjige v nenovadnih razmerah, je virtualen in v bistvu je poln takih res sjajnih predlogov, kako zdaj organizirati to noč knjige. Torej, lahko so to virtualna branja, lahko so posnetki na video, audio. Ravno, recimo včeraj smo dobili krasen posnetek upokojencev, iz doma, iz gradišča, iz gradišča, ki so se v bistvu posneli in so potem recitirali poezijo, znam, ganjeni smo pač ob takih, ob takih prispevkih res. Zato apeliramo še na vse druge, pošiljajte, pošiljajte nam svoje prispevke, literarne navodihe, knjižne namige, kako preživljate čas s knjigo, podite s knjigo tudi v naravo. Včeraj je bil Svetovni dan zemlje, v okviru tega poteka tudi zelo lepa pobuda in potem v okviru noči knjige branje drevesom. Torej lahko vzamete knjigo, preprosto greste nekam v naravo in in tam berete in si napolnate duha in telo. 
lahko preberete pravljico otrokom, um, lahko, lahko se podružite ob knjigi, lahko organizirate um, online literarni klub, pogovor ob vaši najljubši knjigi, karkoli, karkoli, je pač raz dobro došlo. Na naši spletni strani um, uh, noč knjiga, noc knjiga tika si, um, je, je tudi prejavnica na dogodke, da lahko pač potem te... Um, Da, bom, da imamo neko strno na platformo, kjer so v bistvu ti dogodki zbrani in lahko potem tudi drugi dostopajo do teh vsebin. Uh, si pogledajo, kje se kaj dogaja um, in skratko praznujemo na, na polno in uh, začem še danes. Andreja, če imaš mogoče tisto besedilo, ki smo ga v Angleščini prvotno predstavili, ki je del poslanice naše, uh, Mogoče si, prebe, če lahko v odlomek iz njega uh, prebereš, uh, če boš našla še v Slovenščini, ker to smo naredili samo v Angleščini. Ne pa povem tem, da čakamo še uh, letošnjega vodijo, programskega vodijo slovenskih dnevo knjige iz Ljubljane, uh, aljaža uh, Koprivnikarja, vsak, mogo bi se nam pravzaprav vsak trenutek pridružiti, če me Matej sliši, ga prosim, da ga kar tako loči, če pride. Aljaž je sicer pač pesnik, tudi sam, zelo angažiran in uh, letos je pripravil fantastičen program. Uh, mi ne bi slovenski midnevi knjige v Ljubljani uh, v Parku Zvezda organizirali pač ne, štiridnevni knjižni sejem v tem času. Z izredno zanimivim programom žal je zaradi teh razmer to odpadlo, vendar pa uh, čak tane pa maček na ga, a mu šti rekla, ne dam, če lahko, Gre kaj bratno. In uh, mislim, da ga je zelo prizadelo kot tudi nas, ker uh, 23. april je bil vedno tisti datum, ko smo se ga vsi tudi založniki zelo veseli, veselili, ko smo lahko v osončeni, včasih tudi odeževljeni zvezdi, parku zvezda, a ne, smo se srečali enkrat na leto vsaj mi vsi, in s, drug s drugim in z bralci in bralkami in kupci, bilo je res veselo, leto se to žal odpadlo za enkrat, čeprav naša želja je še naprej, ne, noč knjige bo po izteku karantene in ko to možno poskušala izpeljati vseeno pač vsaj dvodnevan sejem uh, v parku, knjižni sejem. Uh, torej, ali ja že še ni, zato pač predlagam, da mogoče še imamo še en literarni zaključek. Andreja, se ti mogoče našla poslanico? Da. Aha. No, dej, a lahko prebereš nekaj tistih ključnih misli? Bom, da, da bojo še naši poslušalci slišali. Ja, za sve, več strnili smo v bistvu to, kar je, kar je za nas v bistvu noči, uh, noči knjiga, več ta, ta zvezna svetloba, ki, katero, zaradi katere pač sploh, sploh delamo, se trudimo, um, imamo to knjigo gradništvo, um, tako, mi, mi čutimo, da noč knjiga ima poslanstvo obsijati pozabljeno in čudovito, čudovito notranje bistvo. Uvrniti upanje in zaupanje v drugega. In naspomniti, da se ta danes ne spremenjamo ne z bombami, ne z številkami, pač pa z zavedanjem tega, kaj smo. Tebi, drug drugamu, žvalim, razplinam, zemlji, v solju, dovatnom, vsem, kar je. Verjamemo, da se svet spreminja in prebuja s knjigo v roki in da z branjem prižigamo luč prihodnosti. Noč knjige je naš od srca odgovor na temočance in verjamemo, da se luč najjasneje vidi v najglobri temi. Cvetka? Jaz mislim, da se ena pesem od Kosovelo zelo lepo navezuje na tole, kar si glih kar, kar povedala in sicer. Mi se zavedamo, da leži odgovornost bodočnosti na nas, da ležijo v bodočnosti pogoji našega življenja. Zato ne bomo podobni tistemu učenjaku, ki mu je prišla postrežnica povedati, da je streha v plamenih, pa je odvrnil, da njega gospodarstvo ne zanima. Hvala, Cvetka. Um, Andreja, imaš Silvijo plet? Um, sem samo v bistvu želela, um, želela povedati, da če morda Aljaža um, 
че се нам не бо успел приключити, um, само у мен има едно зело лепо побудо, um, ке е туди узникнила пъч в окверу тега празнувања um, данашнега книга. Um, Торе гре то за побудо, ки сицер оригинално прихаја из Каталонија. Они в Каталонији па данас празнувајо um, празник, um, uh, Books and Roses, они рече о книга и вртница, то в Шпанщини би било то либро си роса, за по каталонско жал, не знам кога да ти ми е жал, се бом потем погледала како се то рече. Um, Авак, то па е um, една тако лепа побуда да се ожелимо на како пресадити туди на, на uh, словенска тла, озерома е um, пач на како алјаш, uh, то екипа мало ширшо in uh, še nekateri mi literarni ustvarjaci v bistvu v, v um, povezavi in gre, gre pravzaprav za to, da se na praznik knjige v Kataloniji, ki danes praznuje San Jordi, to je, to je torej dan Svetega Jurja po naše, um, praznujejo knjigo in si podarjajo knjigo in vrtnico. Tako da, um, kaj lepše ga v bistvu kot prej ki um, zadarilo, To je v bistvu tudi en, ko bi rekla, da da se vprašamo sami pri sebi, kaj smo pripravljeni, če smo pripravljeni tudi na ta način podpreti knjigo, da da knjige kupimo, da podpiramo produkcijo tudi domačih avtorjev, pa tujih, da da skratka ta ta knjižni, to knjižno vasolje, da se nekako da, da sije in da, da sploh lahko um, vse skupaj nekako se vrti, a ne, tako kot naš planet. Um, tako da, um, ja, v okviru te, te pobude, mislim, da so bo še v prihodnjih letih, uh, ko bomo nekako bolj svobodni v gibanju, da se bo, da bo še kaj lepo bi zgodilo. No. Okay. Bukse in vrtnice. Da, super. Še enkrat povem, da Noč knjiga je res vse ljudski projekt. Torej, v bistvu Slovenija ima je zelo izjemna v tem in se premalo zaveda, koliko na stotine zborov obstaja, recimo, ki imajo tradicije, ki gre do desetletja ali celo stoletja morda nazaj. Um, tudi raznovrstnost teh zborov je neverjetna. Skratka, ljudska umetnost je zelo močna. Tudi v času uh, tako preklinjenega socializma, kakorkoli Jugoslavije, je bila zgrajena neverjetna kulturna mreža, ki je ena najmočnejših na svetu. Vsaka vas ima kulturni dom in čas je, da se zavemo, da je to izredno pomembno dediščina, ki nam danes lahko veliko pomeni, da tega nimajo ne Angleži, ne Američani, ki smo jih zavideli, a, tele, tujci, oni, kot obladajo, ta zahod razviti, tisti intelektualci, ki vam to govorijo, pozabte jih, ker ne vejo, kaj govorijo. Anglija je protikulturna že desetletja, od Margaret Thatcher naprej, pesnik je tako rekoč uh, sinonim za kletvico, za zgubo, men da je celo brez domec biti boljš, Podobno je v Ameriki že zelo dolgo. Nemčija in Francija se boljš držita, ampak kljub temu vladajo številke. Vladajo številke, tako vladajo, da grejo lase po konc. In prav klevam v rok, v roki knjigo, ki jo klele prej naš šmuc, klele, ne vem zakaj, se tok zadevo vanjo, to je pač posebna, nekateri boste poznali, posebna edicija Svetlane Makarovič, knjiga, ki je stala, ne vem, tisoč evrov, se mi zdi. In meni je poklenila ta len izvod. In, um, in recimo tale pesem tudi, ki jo lahko dost ponaključil, izberam recimo za tale trenutek. Uh, čeprav jo ne bom znal, ne pa povem, da je v bistvu ta pesem del cikla, ki je šel v okviru Horror Mundi. To so te groza sveta, to je v bistvu nepozaben uh, performance pesniški ob spremljavi glasbenika Zlatka Kaučiča, vrhunskega džezista in tolkalista v svetovnem merilu vrhunskega sta naredila pretresljiv 40-minutni performans. Nazadnje je bil sem da, 10. novembra na Velika modru drame, Ljubljanske drame. In to je res nepozabno, ker to so besede, veste, če bo to ustali za desetletja ali pa celo stoletja, tudi v pomin temu, kam smo. Kam je danes zašla pač neka civilizacija, ki se ima za kulturo, pa to ni in ona sprotja, na žalost. In danes res zato delamo noč knjige. Skratka, moram da pa dolo čala, no, kaj vam že. Uh, mi pa po svetu vandramo, eden drugemu hudo delamo. 
eden drugemu hudo delamo, vsa je na svetu tako. Jaz bom tekal in tebe lovil, ker mi je to všeč močno, ker mi je to všeč močno, vsa je na svetu tako. Jaz bom tebi istaknil oko, ker mi je na poti zelo, ker mi je na poti zelo, vsa je na svetu tako. Ker imaš rad, bom tebi vzel, ker bo meni prav prišlo, ker bo meni prav prišlo, vse je na svetu tako. S tvojimi sovzami bom tla pomil, ker imam v hiši rad čisto, ker imam v hiši rad čisto, vse je na svetu tako. Svetlana Makarovič. Ja, ampak na žalost živim v svetu, kjer je tako, kjer se je spodbuja in tako te dons vam dana rekla, ne, se je spodbuja nezaupanje drug druga, sovraštvo, zdaj se bojimo, na nosovih imamo nagobčnike, imamo maske, bojimo se drug druzga, bojimo se sami sebe in to je agenda ne kapitalizma, ne kapitala, kot je vandana povedala, danes je pet diktatorjev, ki imajo večjo moč, kot so imeli vsi krali skupaj od faraona naprej in pišejo zakone in jim ustreza, da se mi sovražimo oziroma, da si ne zaupamo, da sebi ne zaupamo, ustreza jim, da mislimo, da znanost ve vse odgovore in pri tem povsem zatajo, da ta znanost, ta znanost ve v življenju en košček, prvič, in drugič, da znanost, ki služi kapitalu in v glavnem je ni znanost neodvisna, ampak je dekla, je dekla, In da tudi statistike in metode in vse prilagaja temu, da ustreza svojemu gospodarju. In to ni več znanost. Kot je rekel filozof Martin Heidegger, znanost je nova religija. Danes znanost, na žalost, v velikem delu je religija. In nobena religija ni bolj nevarna kot tista, katere verniki verjamejo, da je njihov bog in njihova resnica nepreklicna. In danes večina tudi, Teh intelektualcev, ki imajo v javnem svetu privilegirano besedo, izhaja iz tega, da je ta Bog še kako resničen in če ti ne razmišljajo v skladu s to znanostjo, si takoj somljiv in še malo in si teoretik za rote. Danes je teoretik za rote vsak, ki razmišlja svobodno in mediji celo vojno delajo to tako in tako. Naprej, skratka, te pesmi so Svetlane Makarveče kako preroške, natančne, resnične, ker umetnost ima ravno to moč, da imenuje neimenljivo, da zna zajeti to vse. Ne povem to, jaz sem da bi sporočila od daljaža, da se žal ne bo mogel odeležiti tega le srečanja, tako da smo proti koncu. Andreja in Cvetka. Kdo? Anja. Anja Novak. Joj, ne pride? Anja Novak, umetnica. Mi smo upali tudi na družbo noco Ivane Petrnelja, pa Blaža Šefa, pa upali smo na sodelovanje Violete Tomič, pa Vesna Marija Maher, to je naša ekipa iz Medane, ki je že nekaj let, s katero delamo pesniške performance, tudi z Antoanom. Antoan, do you remember Violeta, Ivan, the team, the actors team that were with us? Of course I remember, of course. They should be with us, but unfortunately they couldn't do it tonight, so but we will get a very good friend probably now and one of best Slovenian uh, actors and artists and she's also a poet, Anja Novak, a great talent, very young and we are producing a book with her now. Uh, Andrea, povej malo te knjigi, pa upamo, da se čim prej pojavi, ker mi bomo zaključali. Andrea, povej, kaj snuje Anja Novak oziroma malo drugaj ime, a ne? Um, yeah, uh... Objavili bomo, prihaja ena zelo, kako bi rekla, hore do prevratniška, občutena, čisto posebna poezija, nek svoj nov jezik. Ta pesniška zberka bo nosi naslov rane in torej tudi zaenkrat je še delo ni naslov, morda so bo še kaj spremenilo v mes, 
In bo v bistvu posebna predvsem zaradi te, tudi zaradi tega, seveda zaradi jezika, zaradi ekspresije in tako naprej. Ampak, kar bo pa še posebej um, prestanetljivo, bo, je pa to, da bodo ob pesmih črtne kode in te črtne kode bodo potem uh, vodile, vodile naprej um, v, v virtualni prostor in um, bo to nekakšno odprto delo, ta opera aperta um, uh, in sicer v tem smislu, da bo potem poezija nadgrajevana s um, raznimi performansi, z glasbo, um, s plesom, z dramsko igro, um, z intervjuji. Tako da v bistvu um, gre, za, gre za en tak zelo v razvejan uh, projekt mlade pesnice, tudi igravke um, in je krasno v bistvu delati delat na tem. Res. Um, Mislim, da bo Anja v, v prihodnosti, bomo priredili takšen literarni večer v hiši sonjavači knjig, um, knjigarne naj bi se odprle že po teh prvomajskih praznikih. Mislim, da 4. maja sem danes slišala, um, v daj dobro jutro je govorila Renata Zamida o tem um, in bomo zgotovo še kraj v bistvu lepo da nasnovali skupaj. Um, in bo tudi ono v bistvu še samo potem spregovorilo o, te, o tej knjigi. Eno od, eno od mnogih, v bistvu, eno od mnogih v produkciji. Um, rok, um, jaz sem mogoče uh, želela, želela vključiti še Antoana. Um, I don't know, Antoine, where are you? Uh, da, se, da se v bistvu od njega poslovimo še s kakšno njegovo pesmjo. Ah, there you are. <laughs> Ok. <laughs> Veš kaj, dej, jaz bi pa še, jaz bi še povedal tudi nekaj, Andreja. Par stvari. Bi povedal, da založba Sanje, to od leta 2014 dela noč knjiga, povabil smo k sodelovanju, mislim, da je že 24 uh, partnerjev projekta Ožih, ki imajo nekak status organizatorja, lahko jih ti med tem prebrskaš, da ne bom koga pozabil, izpostavil bi, uh, torej, Narodna razredna knjižnica, društvo pisatelov na prvem mestu, ko sem oni, Veno Taufer, takratni predsednik, je, uh, je odločno podprl našo pobudo. Potem uh, mislim, da so zveza uh, društva založnikov, društvo knjigotržcev, Amnesty International, uh, potem zelo raznolika druština, je SKD zelo pomemben, javni sklad za kulturne dejavnosti, ker jo povezavi z umenjeno nadaljevanje tradicije te fantastične zborov. Skratka, mislim, da nas je zdaj že pravzaprav 27, mislim, tudi mladinska knjiga, beletrina in tako naprej. Podpira projekt, ne povem še to, pač projekt so financirala ta založba Sanje in javna agencija za knjigo. Včasti pokrovitelj smo pa danes malo omenjali, kar je pa ključno je pa UNESCO. UNESCO komisija za Slovenijo. In ne povem o tem še to, podobno imajo na Hrvaškem in naš cilj je v bistvu to idejo zasajati v vse države in posod, da bi noč knjige lahko v svojih jezikih pod pokroviteljstvom UNESCO praznovali se posod. In uh, UNESCO namreč je svetovno upanje za začito kultur. To upanje je 15 let najmanj pod sistemskim udarom tistih, ki danes uh, upravljajo z kapitalom, uh, pod si finanč, finančno blokado združenih držav in pa Amerike in pa, pa Velike Britanije. To na veliko poveo temu, ka, s kakšno kulturo oziroma barbarizmom, pravzaprav imamo pravka. Ob enem imate te dve sili, podobno kot združenih narodi, so si ohranile pravico veta. Niti slučajno, da bi se postavljali neko vredno z drugimi ljudstvi, ne, imajo pravico veta in one mogočajo, Vse, kar dejansko lahko pomaga kulturam, da se ohranjajo. Namreč, tako kot raslinske in živalske vrste danes izginjajo človeški, človeške kulture tisočletne. In UNESCO že 15 let opozarja z raziskavami, da je ra krivulja izginjanja kultur v svetu in v eksponentni rasti. To je, nepred, to je greh, to je tak zločin, to je tak zločin, da je neodpusten. Danes ni več, ne gre za to, imamo mi radi, ne vem, Bila Gejca in pa Bezosa ali kogarkol, ki še sami sebe ne posedujejo svoje lastne pameti mimo grede, ampak to je že filozofsko vprašanje. Danes gre za to, da mi preprosto tega več ne smemo dovoliti. Preprosto več ne smemo dovoliti, ker gre za 
gre za zločin proti človeštvu in proti tudi rastlinami živalim, s katerimi se ravnako, da je to naše. Kaj je naše na tem planetu, lepo prosim, kaj je naše in kaj nesemo s seboj. Bom rekel, ta zahodnji ideologija, zelo nevarna, je pravzaprav si prisvojila in je v religijo, se je spremljala črno religijo, v črno nevarno, smrtonosno, nihilistično, destruktivno in absolutno fundamentalistično. Pravi fanatizem niso talibani, pravi fanatizem je na Wall Streetu, pravi fanatizem je v Bank of England, pravi fanatizem je v International Bank Settlement, mednarodni sklad, to je fanatizem. In to zelo nevaron s konkretnimi posledicami. Namesto, da bi pač mednarodni danani sklad, ki je odgovoren za vrsto zločinov po vsem svetu s svojim izsiljevalskim vedenjem, sedel za zapahi, da rečemo, in veljal za teroristično organizacijo, imamo pač tako, da se jim klanjajo vse po vrsti. Zakaj? Zato, ker imajo številke, kar razpolaga z njimi. Zdaj sem se razumel, ampak se vračam. UNESCO, skratka, je zvezanih rok. Vse konvencije, ki bi lahko pomagale knjigam, kulturam, zniževanjem davkom, se blokirajo strani te dveh starih kolonialnih sil. In Noč knjige je projekt, kjer se ljudje povezujemo na vseh ravnih in zaščitimo svojo kulturo in dajemo, pa zaprav izkušamo povrn dostojanstvo in zato tudi preširno vers, ki je danes nekako letos edinost sreča sprava, je pravzaprav moto letošnje noči knjige in velja za vseh jezikih sveta. In priširen, recimo, ki se ga omenil, je tukaj nepozaben in je dragocen še in še. In njegova dragocenost, če ga bomo znali tudi v prevodih, mi ga imamo recimo v Vanesu Redgrave, ki je nepozabno povedala zdravljico za nas, za našo založbo, to je, on je pesnik sveta. On je pesnik sveta, on nisem pesnik slovencev. On je, taki duhovi so zelo redki, taki umetniški, iščiščeni. Vsi so šli pa skozi zelo hode bolečine, tako kot tudi Kosovel, ki je 22 let tam preminul. Pustil je pa za sabo dediščino, ne da bi mu išla ena knjiga. Dediščino, ki še danes odkrivamo. Založba Sanje je pripravila v zvezi s tem, pa da zdaj naredim, ker smo že sponzorja, tega projekta že sedem let, reklamo, pripravila zdaj le dve njegove knjigi. Prva je knjiga njegovih vsej ozbranih, kriza človečanstva in druga je knjiga njegove poetične proze, Burja. Sami, mislim, to je taka dragocenost in to je treba z največjo občutljivostjo prevajati v druge jezike in postaviti tam, kam mor spada. In tudi zato se mi prizadevamo. In Slovenija bo leta 22 častna gostja na Frankfurtskem knjižnem sejmu, ki je pač nekako v fokusu takrat medijev in kao tako imenovanega biznisa, ki pač mimo grede ima velik prezir do knjig, ker jih obravnava tako kot živali, ki jih pač pobija v milijardah, v brezdušnih in grozljivih pogojih klavnic. In to ni knjiga, ki nas zanima. Mi bomo pač tja prineseli med drugim Slovenci upam Kosovela, prineseli bomo Priširna, prineseli bomo Bartola in njegovega Alamuta, ki je vse bolj aktualen in ga prevaja vse več ljudstv po svetu. V kratkem ga bomo ogledali v Braziliji, v kratkem izide na Polskem, v kratkem izide celo na Kitajskem. Vrsta hollywoodskih producentov je hotla delati Alamuta samo pod pogoje, ki so apsolutno nespremljivi. Pa ne govorimo o financa, govorimo o načinu dela, govorimo o tem, kako bi ga spridili, pač tega slovenci ne bomo dovoljeli. Nikomur lahko pride zdaj z milijardo, Okaj pred milijardi bi razmislili, ker s temi naredimo svetovno revolucijo. Naredimo Alamuta, ne? Ampak tako, skratka, tudi Radio Slovenija bi rad omenil, ker je medijski pokrovitelj, že nekaj let projekta, v tem omenil bi tudi to, a, le rejamo Alamuta, ne? Omenil bi tudi še eno knjigo, ki smo jo nedavno objavili, ne bom tudi pokazal, to je pa tale knjiga. Imenuje se Prisluhni mali človek, ki je prva knjiga v zbirki knjižnica sežganih knjig. Wilhelm Reich, ki je izhajal iz Freudove in bil Freudov učenec, najbolj talentiran učenec. In na neki točki se je pa njegova pot s Freudom rešla. Jaz osebno menjam, da je Reich in zame je pravo odkritje zadnje tri leta, ko ga povedal. Čeprav sem še študiral filozofijo, ampak Rajha sem zelo malo poznal in si zamerim, kako je to mogoče. Izginuje z vseh kurikulumov. 
raivelja za čudaka, new agerja, za očtekanca, za norega znanstvenika. Torej, to je umetnik, ki so ga, oziroma znanstvenik, recimo, filozof, kako bi rekel, ne bo tak, še generacije celostne, ki je idejo Libida, ne, ki jo je omenjal, a Anja se bo predružila, je pripeljal zelo daleč in ko je razvil še pojem orgon, to je človek, ki so ga v 30-ih letih po množična psihologija, izidu knjige množična psihologija fašizma, aha, Anja, ti se kar preklop, počasi, jaz zaključim, še zvok, Anja, evo, preključila se nam je še Anja Novak, Anja Žil, jo, Čau. Jaz sem sred svojega strašnega monologa, sem zaključen ga, en, dva, tri in Andreja, videl se kar z Andrejo pripravta. A ves, kaj pa? Kje pa je Andreja? O, čau Andreja. Super, evo Anja Novaka, smo jo prej napovedovali in upali, da bi šla in pa zdaj res prišla, super. Ob meni pa ne poznaš Cvetko, mi smo mi tri, Andreja, pa Cvetka pa jaz smo danes tole nekak ob pomoči Mateja, ki je skriti Božje oko v zadjo, ki nas upravlja, a ne? Ja. Tako. Skratka, govorimo o Rajho, govorimo o tem, kako so ga preganjali fašisti, pa potem nacisti. On je bežal pravzaprav v 30-ih letih z države državo, na konc je pristal v Skandinaviji, na konc je tudi z Švedske mogel bežati, ker so pač Švedska je kolaborirala, oziroma je pač bila neutralna. In potem je bežal tudi iz Švedske, ker so bili nacisti tam doma, v Ameriko, pa je oč, da bo tam. No, v Ameriku se mu je pa zgodba ponovila na, čeprav je začetka kazalo drugače, on je tam ustavil v Orgonski inštitut, nadaljeval raziskave, proti Rajhu se je začela strašna gonja, pri kateri so sodelovali tudi obveščevalne službe in tako naprej, vseh sort, ne samo te kapitalistične, ampak tudi z druge strani, ne, bali so se ga tudi komunisti zelo, on je pač preprosto, eno preprosto resnico, ki jo je danes, van dana šiva, na svoj način pisala, ki je tudi, ko smo šlišali fizičarka, ne, tukaj le, v tem našem love streamingu, to je love streaming, to ni live streaming, to ni live streaming, in ki je pravzaprej na osnovnih misli, če lahko rečemo, bude, ker ne gre več za misel, gre za pač nekaj, ker lahko samo čutaš globok v srcu in ga bi rekel. In ta pojem orgon in orgonska energija sem mu prepovedal in tudi danes, če boste skušali o tem, ki zvedati, nikar ne probite z Wikipedijo, ker Wikipedija laže. Wikipedija v vseh bistvenih stvareh, ki so lahko politično sporne, laže. Na njo prežijo desetine plačancev, pijarovcev, ki skrbijo, da piše po voli gospoda, tistega gospoda, ki se mu danes reče Lord, pa sedi v no kakor kol. In zdaj le bom dal, zaključam, ta knjiga je zjemno aktualna, napisana je bila v apokalipsi druge svetovne vojne, ko je desetine milijone ljudi umirali na nepojemljiv način, ko so se atomske bombe v imenu svobode in demokracije metale na sto tisoče ljudi, je napisal to knjigo, prisluhni mali človek, ki bo vsazga, ki bo pribral pretresla, tako da evo, tu je bo zdaj moj mali govor, ne, velikemu človeku in zdaj pa z največjim veseljem pripuščam besedo Andreji in Ani. Ani jo živjo. Da, Andreji. Jaz to najprej vprašam, če si v redu. Sam, sam in pul so bili prijazni zdravniki in posnela sem, kako so mi šivali rano in imam štiri šive in no ja, no, tako, pač dobro sem odnesla pa to. A vidi, mislim, to je očitno prav en, kako ne bi rekla, en, kako bi rekla, en tak, eno sopadanje, pač, če pišaš, piši zares in bo tudi realnost sopadla, sopadla, pač s tem v bistvu, kar daješ v poeziji, takrat, kadar ti gre v poeziji zares. Ta pesniška zberka, ki bo išla v sanjah letos na pomlad, Tvoja nosi naslov rane. To je smešeno, ne? Ja. In, ja, in, kako si, kako v bistvu, kako si, zakaj rane, veš, kako si prišla do tega naslova? Mislim, danes, dobro, danes se je pač zgodila ena nesreča, zdaj to sovpada nekako z naslovom te, 
Te zberke rane so površinske, rane so, rane so tiste, ki grajo, ki grajo globino. Zakaj je treba govoriti o ranah in zakaj, zakaj v bistvu o tem um, spregovarjati malo zbirke? Um, mislim, da tako, če ti na prvo vprašanje, zakaj rane, a ne? oziroma ali rana ali kakorkoli, ni še čist rečeno, ali bo množina ali dnina. Um, se mi zdi prišlo zelo intuitivno, ko sem pač gledala pol vas tam materijal še enkrat, se mi je zazdel, da je, da povsod se pač razpira neki, kar ni mogoče, ne povsod, ampak neki, kar je neprijetno za človeka. Ne? In tudi recimo rana ni glih ena prijetna stvar, ampak je pa lahko zelo, uh, mislim, stvar, ki ti nekaj odpre, a ne? ni nekaj, kar bi na nek način zapiralo. Ne? Je lahko zelo pozitivno, ti vidiš v notranjost, uh, lahko pogledaš v srce nekomu obitren liv, je na nek način uh, uh, mogoče v nekem svetu, kjer moraš biti samo neumoren, neka negativna lasnost, ampak v resnici jaz pa zelo rada, uh, kadar ljudje pokaža renljivost, kadar Mislim, jaz se tudi strašno svoja renljivosti, ampak takrat šele zares nekako uh, spoznaš človeka, razumeš, zakaj je ravna kot ravna. Ne? Uh, to zdaj ne pomeni, da zdaj, če imaš neke velike zločince, da če oni pokažejo svoja renljivost, boš kar odpustil vsa dejanja, pa boš razumel, zakaj so takšni kot so, zaradi katerih svojih ran. Ampak tako je pa vedno ti obrne en... Um, uh, eno tako na prvo žogo v tis o stvari, a ne. Plus, da rana mi je tako nos, mi je en tukaj nekih, po, mislim, rana je lahko ja rana, a ne, en taka na, na telesu. Uh, lahko je... Ran pozdravila, ran pozdravila. Ja, e, to, man lahko je maček, <laughs> evo. In uh, lahko je v bistvu mene rana, tudi vedno spomnila nekaj, kar se pač odpira, je recimo tudi men čist spolovilo žensko, ne, rana stvar, odkud pridemo, kamer se potem vračamo. Itak, ne vem, men kri mi je zelo blizu, zdaj, ko gledam, pa ne, namerno, ampak se mi pojavlja veliko, ko pišem, kri, meso, uh, take stvari in uh, pol je pač nekako se zgodil ta naslovno. Ampak ja, je recimo je brazda tudi, kamer recimo zaseješ, a ne, um, seme pa zraste, v bistvu zraste na rani, a ne, če ti narediš na njivi brazdo, ne. Um, ja, krasta, recimo, vsaka brazgotina, k nos zgodbo, ne. Potem je pač zgodba, rana so v bistvu tudi usta, ne, ki jih odpreš. Um, kaj, kaj? Ja, prej je tudi vam dano, bi so govorila o tem, kako um, zemlo tudi ranimo in pač dan, dan danes se moramo zaceliti, tako da to so v bistvu tudi, tudi rane zemlje, rane sveta, vse rane, Um, ja, in v bistvu pa še nekaj zelo zanjivega bo pri tej zberki, da se pa ta rama, pa telesnost, pa celo mesenost na en zelo tak avtentičen in, in um, kaj se rečem, to, to besedo visterala, na ne, pa tudi, da prihaja tukaj s, s um, drobojo, nekako se bo, se bo zelo um, videlo tudi v oblikovnem smislu. Um, ja. To je pa uh, tajda uh, oblikovalka, je zelo dobro, meni bi ful zanimivo, kako je ona začutla. Um, či, mislim, nisem mi dala nobenih navodil, v bistvu je brala, pa je potem pač naredila neko predlogo, ampak pa sem gotovila, da je naredila to, mislim, da je naredila v bistvu moj zvezek, uh, mislim, moje zvezke, kaj je kamor pišem, ker pač imam nek določen način, ko se ga ne zavedaš, da ga imaš, ampak pol, ko ga je ona tako skinila intuitivno, sem rekla, wow, hudo, ne. Pač ne bom zdaj povedala, kako je, pač itak se bo videl pol na koncu knjigi, ampak ja, uh, mi je tudi to pomembno, ne, ker mi je tudi nasploh mi je pomembno, da knjige imamo lahko v fizični obliki in mi je pomembno, kakšna je. Uh, pa ne zdaj iz nekega sladokusnega, ne samo zato, ampak zato, ker se mi zdi, da ta dotik je pač nekaj čist drugega, no, tako kot recimo zdaj, ko s teatrov, mislim, ki je zaprto, a ne, pa v bistvu nimamo, mislim, so predstave po internetu, pa tako naprej, ampak nikoli to ni isto, kot ti stres, telesen, fizičen stik prisotnosti z gledalcem, ne. Čeprav knjiga ni živo biti, tako kot je gledalcem, ampak vse en je, za me je drugačno. 
а, като виртуален свет. Веко си за Сепарано рекла, то бе седал виртуален свет. Бисува па твоя книга... Ам... О, той па ще скрина. Я, 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 Буранена. Минила бе полно, полно разпукиц, камер се лахко залезе, али го лазен, али па се разпре, се види да срца, али па ново весоли е могуче. Бупай, малей, смо ше в процесу. Я, скрата занимаме, занимаме разпиране, но тега кај лахко наредиш с поезио ше он крај книге, но па, но я, то ме пат занимам ker se mi zdi, da je to smisel na sploh stvari, da grejo on kraj samih sebe. Jaz sem se sama v bistvu prejšnji vikend, ravno minuli vikend, srečala s to poezijo in je v bistvu, to je poezija pri tak občutek, naprimer, ne vem, naj je kot prevejalko pri Silvi Plet zajel, to je srečko posebej, to je preširen, to so ta imena, vač velika, ko nekako poezija, sicer vsak zelo svoj poseben pesniški svet in nekaj tam glas, ampak začutiš pač, kater gre poeziji za res, ki sem začutila tisto sijanje, lepota, ena resnica, autentičnosti, res tiste tiste prisnosti, ko je začutiš, da ti gre, da vstopi vate v bistvu, ne samo skozi um, ampak skozi srce, v bistvu skozi celo biti. Tako da, Anja, res, to je še ena začutanjska knjiga, ki jo res kao ne čakam. Tako da, hvala ti za tvoje rane v jednini, v množini. Hvala ti za to, da jih da imaš tole ove srčnosti in da govoriš. Anja, boš za zaključek še prebrala kakšen odlomek, pa počasi zaključimo? A kater odlomek? Kaj ga hočeš? Karkoli na svetu. Karkoli na sveti. Karkoli v vesolju. Ne izbran. Da ni? Pač kakšno pesca, mogoče iz te pesniške zberke rane, prihajajoče. Aha, da je iz ran. Čak malo. A odprem pol. Kva pa, da je ti poveče? Kaj pa tisto naslovno, tisto to prvo? Prav rane? Prav rane. Aha, čak je. Kakšno po tvoje izberi? Samo malo, da odprem. Hum, hum. Zdaj, Anja bo naša gostja, tako kot številni drugi ostvarjalci, če bo šlo vse po sreči, tudi na letošnjem festivalu Sanje v Medani. Zdaj, mislim, mi srčno upamo, festival je bil načrtovan za konec junija, ampak in sicer v goriških brdih, ampak pač iz občine smo že dobili obvestilo, da so do vključno čisto do konca junija prireditve, vse prireditve odpovedane. Tako da upamo, da nam bo Sanje v medani pač letos uspelo, festival Sanje letos uspelo izpeljati kasneje, mogoče konec avgusta in takrat se z Anjo srečamo, če bo le festival lahko v bistvu zažvel tudi letos. Se nam pa obeta rok, a bomo o tem že kaj govorili za intermeco, dokle je Ranja na najde pes. Ja, 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 nekaj, bodo kaj bom še povedal, Anja, ti se kar lepo počas pripravi, nad se ne modi. Jaz bom sam to povedal. A, se slišimo? Me slišite? Ok. Ja. Andreja, pač festival se v bistvu takole lahko snuje, tudi takole javnosti, a ne, mislim, v bistvu se bo letos dogajal na drugače način. Mi smo imeli en nor program, predvsej drzen, Mogoče nas je pač dogaj ne zavarovalo pred njim, ker lahko mi smo veliko šli do konca, da pomeni že skoraj ruska roleta, ali padeš, ali pa ne, izpeljaš, ali pa ne, ker smo, ker delamo, kot da bi bili, ne vem, Amazon, a ne. In letos je med drugim, med drugimi, ne bi nastopila, ne bi naredil oko produkcija, a ne, projekt za, za, torej, kar tipovej, za Ano Pandur, 
Andreja, pa z Damirom Avdičem, z Duende, to je tekst, ki ga ti prevaja, še on tako eno pozabljeno, mislim, ne pozabljeno, v Slovenščino še ne prevedeno drobno, ampak sila pomembno besedila Duende, ki ga jaz razumem kot ta demon, ki žene umetnost na nek način te pritiska in zdaj, mogoče o tem Duende tu, ampak mislim, da je Anja, Anja, Anja pa zdaj že pripravljena. Ja, sem. Ej, super. Te ranice, ali kaj, čak se imam, ne, a ja, naj lahko pa še, tako me je pa šivo, a se vidi, kaj? To sem tipičan, da bom spodil, da bo zelo, bolj slabo. Zelo slabo. Bil je mlajši od mene, 27 let star zravnik, ful lepo me je zašel. Ok, nima veze, to bomo staj dopol. Dobro. Rane. Rane raztrgat, razrezat, prodret, ustopit, srečat srce, potipat si kri, razlit, svobodit, trne izvlečt, zdravit, šivat, počivat, lizat si rane, menjat organe, klit novo življenje, iz rane rojena v rano sprejeta, za znamek na površini, pričat nesluteno nepredvidljivo v globini, ranit nasilje, ljubezen, zgodbo odpred in nahranit s pesmijo, usta zapred, blebetanju, opasna bit z brazgotino, opasana bit z godovino. Bravo. Dobro. Vredi. Ostale si brez besed. Bravo, Anja, hvala, se veselimo. Pa še to, ker bom izkoristil to priliko, ker se zelo redkokrat vidimo. Andreja prej si reka, da na pomlad bo gledala zbirka. Mislim, zdaj, stvari so tako, ne. Zdaj, knjige, ki izidejo, tudi tvoja Silvija Plet, ne pozabna, ne, ki je kle šla in na žalost je moramo imeti v skladišču, dokaj ne bomo mogli iti naprej. Razen, če kdo želi kupiti, kdo želi kupiti, evo, sem po ceni, 21 evrov, mislim, da je samo. Išla bo pa šel posebni bibliofilski verzi, ker je Andreja to s tako ljubezno in tajda, Pavletič, isto oblikovalka, ki tudi Anino, Anino knjigo dela. In bi rekel sem to, ja, knjiga bo definitivno, jaz upam, da bo junja Anina knjiga. Mogoče že konc maja, ne vemo, ampak ne bi rad preveč obljubljal z vele gledalcem oziroma bralcem in tako. Je pa zanimiva, a ne, mogoče še čisto v tehničnem videku, Anja, za zaključek. Ta knjiga, ti si zaželela, da bo opremljena z linki na posnetke. To bo to, posnetki ne bojo na CD-jo, a ne? Kako bo s tem? To ne bom zdaj povedala, kako bo s tem. To je še skrivno. Ma, to je nekaj, kar še, pač še je, se še rojeva, se še bubi z se še spočenja, tako da je še prezgodejo ten govor. Tako kot ko si noseč, pa ne poveš tako jo sem, da si noseč. Ali pa to, ali bo fantek, ali bo punič. Bo vse, vse ob svojem času. Skratka, obeta se prava petniška revolucija in upam, da bomo preživeli. Antoine, we are now saying goodbye to each other. I am so happy that you were part of our scenography whole evening. So we were partly in Luxembourg as well all the time. Thank you for the company. Anja, I don't... Hey, hi. I don't understand Slovenian, but of course, I just want to say the rhythm of the poem that you did was very... I really enjoyed listening. Like I was, I can't, I was doing something and then suddenly I stopped because I heard you reciting you know? mm. oh i have no idea what you said but thank you <laughs> yeah. 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 what was it uh, what was it it yeah. was about um uh wounds uh, uh poem about wounds because the the actually yeah Okay. Rana means wounds. Rana means wounds. Rana, yeah, Rana. Wound. And like, today like, I, I, I got, uh, you know, it's well, like a symbolic. I wanted to steal a mirror on the street. It, somebody threw it away and I want to steal it. And it was like, I just put a hand on it and it just uh, did, bow. it was, uh, how do you say? Yeah, blood just came out. Yeah. I didn't even, that, um, yeah. 
lift it up. <laughs> you're reminding me. You are reminding me of something that happened to me. Crazy things that happen in the night when you are alone at home. Yeah, Sunday night. I think it was Sunday night. There was some kind of insect under this lamp, right? Yeah. A big insect. It's called daddy long legs in English. And uh, then I saw it on the, above the other lamp on the on the wall. And I went. I went with a tissue. I crushed it. Yeah. I thought maybe I should let it out the window, but maybe it's carrying a virus. I crushed it, and then on the way from here to the toilet, so that I could flush it away, I smashed three toes of my left foot into the corner of the sofa. <laughs> you know, and I thought, okay, I shouldn't have killed it, should I? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The object punishes, the, or in this case, the insect punishes you for wanting yeah. to kill or kill. <laughs> I understand you, yeah. Get well soon. <laughs> okay. Also, it's it's interesting because Arahan is with us. Also, the this uh, one <laughs> black cat, and so his name is Ran. And um, it's so interesting how words are inter intertwined yeah. because Ran comes from it's the title of the movie by Kurosawa, and yeah. Ran in Japanese actually means chaos, and oh, wow. in it's wound. So. Yeah, and in Spanish, in Spanish, Rana is frog. Ah, Tochno, yeah, yeah, it's true. I thought you were talking maybe about a frog because frog. I heard Rana, and then I heard the rhythm, do, do, do. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like a frog jumping. <laughs> yeah. Give imagination. <laughs> Great thing. Beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And it was your own poem? It's yeah. your poem, right? Yeah. And do you have it in English or French or Italian? Uh, I was, um, exp yeah, I was doing some experiments with French, translating them into French uh, 10 years ago, I think, maybe less. Uh, but now not, not anymore. But I have a few in Spanish, yeah. Because, yes, Spanish uh, yeah. Uh, but I don't know them. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you want them, I can send them there. Yeah, please. Please okay. send Please send them to me in Spanish, yeah. I will tell uh, Rook for the content. <laughs> uh, so maybe it's time to say goodbye right. and meet again. I, I, uh, book, night, book night is now becoming intimate. <laughs> it almost feels like a friendly conversation, not that we are uh, like live, <laughs> live streaming, love streaming. I um, yeah. Yeah, I I think it's Ran. He wants to, he wants to, he wants to grab Ran. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. To grab Ran. <laughs> oh, we have a... oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Alice Alice from Wonderland. I wanted to steal a mirror from the street for <laughs> but then I got Ran. You're a rabbit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, chouchou. Uh, si tu comprends yeah. français, c'est peut-être mon chouchou. Yeah. <laughs> so it was so nice to have you here just to tell a couple of words for Ran. Ran means in Japanese uh, chaos and uh, chaos from chaos to cosmos is actually um, its agenda or a motto of our festival. It's chaos from, it's a statement from one of Koyas, uh, Kosovel's poems and it's somehow, so he was found on, on High Street, lost completely and Andrea actually saved him. Um, he, he was lost to, to cars <laughs> and he's very grateful. Grateful, he wants always to be, you know, to be part of us and so on. And um, so it was uh, very nice to having you all here and all, all the listeners and the watchers that we have, uh, thank to them. Uh -huh, Antoine wants to say something. Yeah, I would like to invite you to join me for more poetry next week on uh, um, more or less this time next week so is that wait this is the wrong way isn't it is no, it's okay. no it's okay it's okay ah, because i see the opposite uh okay so on um on thursday next week 8 p.m central european time i will do some poems about walking during the lockdown and also the nights that i the long nights i spent on this desk pretending to play the piano and talking to Otto, who keeps me company, 
right? He writes more than me, actually, or two. <laughs> yeah? So please join me next week. I'll send the link later. Okay, uh, please send me a link and we will share it to our Twitter account, Sanya, and Book Night, uh, Facebook, and so on. So, uh, okay, Mia, last I words, any last words? Uh, have a nice evening and have a nice night of uh, some book love night. And I'm going for, to another Zoom uh, with my colleagues from theater. So, okay. uh, see you and so thank it, you. Yeah. Take care of your Rana. <laughs> yeah, I'm running now. Running. <laughs> Rana is running away. <laughs> Have a nice evening. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao, Ciao everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.